Yeah. So, um, spent about seven years living in Nigeria from my late teens up until early adulthood. So I've got some kind of lived experience um, and, 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 and totally aware, hands on, in terms of what the um, some of the issues are, the complexities of young boys, you know, from the African and Caribbean diaspora. Um, guys, I'm just going to, we, we, you know, we've got to keep it real tonight. Look, my background, I'm a death row survivor. Um, I'm reformed. I'm redeemed. I'm now a teacher. I'm a peak performance motivator and a mentor. I'm privileged, as we all know, to be the founder of um, Real Talk Mentors. And this was born out of my own um, personal need um, to project positive role modeling experiences, to pay it forward, as it were. You know, um, I was asked back in the day, what do you need? You know, at the brink of my sort of crazy days, um, suicidal tendencies and whatnot in Nigeria, I was asked, what do you need? And someone stepped up and, and, and basically took me under their wing. This is not a parent. This was somebody from the family nucleus. I think this is one of the things we're going to try and bring into play tonight. And so it's real talk that we're dealing with. So now it's, it's, it's in my heart. I'm passionate, as, as a lot of our team members are, and all of us on the platform tonight, about paying it forward to the next generation. Yeah. Um, sometimes when there's maybe not a father figure or even a mother figure not available, it's important that there's a nucleus that involves others. You know what I mean? Other adults you know, that can sort of uh, pick up the slack. So that's what's happened to me. Um, worked with adult, worked with um, young people. Um, what we do now, we basically try and facilitate platforms for young people to come and express themselves. Because we feel that, again, young people don't always have that voice. You know what I mean? Without being stigmatized or put down and kind of rejected. So we put the platforms on um, with the aim that they can really express um, and they can be part of a healing solution. Yeah, so that's what we're here tonight to do. Hopefully, we'll get some young people um, coming on. Um, and we're just setting the tone for tonight. I hope I'm not going on too much. But the issue is that the current systematic structure, obviously, we all know, we're all in agreement on this, I'm sure, it needs some serious, urgent review, right? Big time. It needs a big shake-up. And I'm a firm believer, and a lot of my team believe that. It's not, you know, a lot of the time, we keep looking to authority figures, you know? But ladies and gents, this is our problem. Right, this is our issue. These are our children. The government didn't bring our children onto this planet. Right, and so no matter what the support structures are that may be lacking out there, the responsibility still comes back to us. And so, this call to action, what's going on now, is something that I believe is, is going to be so emphatic. I believe it's going to be a you know a massive um, lead in. You know, we, we, when we hear about things like suicides and. Uh, and so forth that's so prevalent amongst the African Caribbean community that's not reported, right? We keep looking at the symptoms. We're not looking at root causes. So one of the things that we do is, is, is go into the root cause issues, the foundational areas, yeah? Let those be identified and start to work with those. So that's that's what we're all about in a nutshell. Don't want to talk uh, push too much. Um, I'm, I'm sure we're going to hear more about Real Talk as we go on through the evening and more about uh, Manhood Academy. So that's me in a nutshell. So I'm looking forward to hearing about you guys and see now we can you know collaborate and really get something constructive on that's going to make a massive difference um in young lives and indeed in our lives um you know as a community yeah so thanks for that thanks for that platform there uh, dj let's move on yeah um if i could ask everyone if you could just like take yourself off mute for a second and please feel free to turn on your camera if you want that's not a problem but i do understand that some of you is you know, I might have a bad hair day or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that problem. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. That's why I got the cap on today. But yeah. You know, yeah. But I just wanted us to just to let that um that youthful energy come out. You know, just for us to be a little bit, you know, um, unconventional. And yeah, just whoever's name you see, just say hello to them. Let's just make a little bit of noise, greeting each other. If you want to put your fist to the screen, let's just be organic and natural. Let's just imagine that we're in actual in a community setting, and then you've come into the building, you've seen everybody, and you you're just greeting them. So there's no set format. Just for one minute, sixty seconds. Talk to whoever you want. Yes, there might be a bit of confusion because someone else might be talking at the same. That's okay. Yeah. Just but let's just break the ice and let's just be a bit crazy mm. just for once before we dive into the real stuff. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Make some noise. I'm gonna, okay. I'm come in. <laughs> My name's Ishmael and I'm looking for a black male counselor. I'm just putting that out there. If there's any black male fully qualified counselors, I would love to link up with you. 
don't get me wrong, I love our sisters, but I, I believe we need more black male counsellors. So, and if you are one of them in this room, please, can I reach out to you? All right, brother. I love that. Yeah, I love that. But let's 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 say hello to each other first. Yeah, yeah let's meet each other first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he, he can't wait. Sure that, sure greetings, wait. blessings. Thank you for inviting yeah. me to this wonderful talk. Forgive me. Welcome, Sorry, everybody. Was this at a freestyle? Welcome, welcome. Welcome, yeah, so welcome. On three, on three, on two, on three, on three. After three seconds, we're gonna make some noise. Yeah, three, two, one. Everyone, just say hello to each other. Let's hello, go. Hello, hello. 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 Good, good. Don't okay. stop, guys. We've got another 30 seconds. Okay. We finished already. Oh, we've got Tim. We've got Tim's there. We've got Steve. We've got Tim. We've got Steve. We've got Tim. 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 We've Yes, we're good. Okay. Greetings, Thank you, Mama guys. Elza, Vivian. Greetings. Yes, greetings, 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 greetings. Yeah, you lot were hard work with that, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think we pushed it, didn't we? Yeah. We're so, we're, so, we're so used to doing everything online now. It's like we're forgetting each other. That's what's going yeah. on. Absolutely, well, absolutely. It's, just, well, it's good to know that the, the thing to know is that as digitalized as the world becomes, the world will always need human touch and human connection. So we have to absolutely. push. Absolutely. 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 You know, and sometimes when we're dealing with the solutions of our problem, it's this kind of energy that's needed, you know, like out of the box thinking. Um, mm. It doesn't matter if you feel uncomfortable, like we just have to do it because it's what's required, you know. I remember when I first wrote my, my a love letter to a girl that I fancied in school, like, I had to step up my comfort. I was sweating, but literally, <laughs> yeah. I, I lost about 10 pounds. <laughs> and I remember, and i never forget the day I went to the letterbox, you know, I put the letter in the letterbox. I ran all the way home, like, <laughs> like, like Usain Bolt, you know what I mean? Um, I don't even know if she got it or not. I, I, I've not spoken to her since. Oh, she didn't even get it. You don't even know if she got it. I don't know. I don't know. All that I don't know. Right here in the <laughs> <laughs> all right so what we're going right. to do um so myself and um real talk we're going to just do some quick intros about us as an organization just so you guys know not too long because we're not here to plug what we're doing but just so some of you are aware and then what we're going to do we're going to introduce our amazing panel as well just so you guys understand their background and um their skill set and then what we're going to do family we're going to have a, a discussion about how do we protect our asset um it's not a lecture we're not I'm professing to have the answers, but I guarantee we as a community, we as a community can definitely find the answers that we need for our solutions, yeah. you know? Yeah. And um, so, yeah, um, do you want to go first, bro? What should I go? No, go for it, go for it, go for it. Uh, you're on the floor, yeah. you're on the floor, DJ. Okay, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'll, pick, I'll pick up the slack. Yeah, I don't want to stunt your, <laughs> stunt your movement. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, so my name's um, Davis Williams. I'm from Manhood Academy. I've been working with young people for the last uh, 20 years-ish, I think. Um, Frontline, I've worked with gangs all over. And I don't like that term, but I'm just using it because I'm not sure who's here. But I've worked with all types of young people. They're talented and gifted. Um, gangs, those that are running country lines, those who um, just need a little hug or a little man arm around them. I also work with young girls as well on various leadership program. I'm also a vegan chef. I also do stuff around um, social media detoxing. I'm also author of four books. At the moment, I'm on a personal journey of positive masculinity. So a lot of the interactions that I have now with young boys is about teaching them what man, no one taught me what manhood was. I have a lot of friends who don't know what manhood is. I'll be straight. Um, it's not as straightforward as a lot of the people may think. It's a process to becoming a man. And um, that's a journey that I'm on right now in terms of teaching our sons, not my, our sons, <laughs> what manhood is and what it looks like. And, and it's, not, it's not like you're teaching someone how to bake a cake. Sometimes you have to teach them through experience. So they have to go on that journey and they have to discover it themselves. So that's something that I'm so passionate about. 
And yeah, like right now I'm at my friend's house and I'm doing this conversation now because <laughs> it is vitally important. Um, I'm also a visionary. Um, I will own that for myself. Like I had this... I have got a massive vision in my head and my vision consists of us working together as a community, you know, getting rid of whatever we need to get rid of just so we can, yeah, plug the holes. And one thing that really triggers me is how unprotected our young people feel in our community, whether it's um, through the narrative, how we label them, through our focus on, like, this was like, this before lockdown, I think it was, last year, and i never forget the day, the amount of messages I got about, yes, black businesses, you can do this, all the black businesses popping up, people doing great stuff, but mm. I've not seen anything about young people, like, young people at home, melting, like, mental, mental health right now, you don't see it, if you're not in the mix, then you don't know, I know Brother Manners is aware, but on the grassroots, things are really, really bad, but we're not hearing anything, why? Because COVID, vaccines, da 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 so we've got a lot of work to do. And, um, you know, like people do, I say, David, you're doing great work and so on and so forth. Me, I would never like, I'm not in this for the likes, you know, I'm in this for genuine change. But sometimes to achieve that change family, yeah, you're gonna have to come out your comfort zone. You're gonna have to just do things that you, you might not want to do, but we have to do it if we're gonna save lives. And this is why we're talking about protecting our assets, our yeah. children. Nothing burns me more when I've got to speak to a mum and she's telling me she don't know where her son is. It's just like, yeah. that this baffles, it baffles my head. I think I've got a, I've got a 10 year old and I thought, I can't imagine them, someone asking me, where's my children? I, don't, I just, I can't comprehend it. I literally can't. But for them to say their child is involved in certain things, they found money at night, and they just don't know what to do. That is, for me, is the worst feeling ever, 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 ever. So through this platform, we really want to empower as many people. Um, we've got a few updates towards the end, something that we're asking everyone to kind of participate in because it's going to take a mass movement, you know? Um, it's not about a media thing, it's about grassroots, you know, that things we have to do in our households and with the family around us, and then it can mushroom out. So um, that's my name anyway, um, Davis Williams. You can just Google Manhood Academy, it will come up. And I'm gonna pass you over to um, my brother, um, over to you, King. Yes, thank you, sir. DJ, respect, bro. Um, yeah, collaboration. I'm gonna say, okay, the, co the, the collaboration is real. Um, I showed something before that based on the title of this uh, the forum tonight, protecting our assets. We've already shown that we are, our vision is to be um, assets for a generation. So my name is Shola. Uh, I said before, born and brought up in the UK of Nigerian descent. Um, I think I, 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 I'm going to say I had my manhood training um, from seven years on the front line in Nigeria. Right, as a real front line, it said that if you can survive in Nigeria, you can survive anywhere in the world. <laughs> and um, you know, from my late teens up to early early twenties, I was out there. Um, big shake up, but you know what? It made me that that's what made me into a man. Anyway, um, you get to see over in this country, there's a lot. We, we have a kind of sense of entitlement, of, of entitlement, if you like. You know, and back home, obviously, we don't have that. Um, so the, you know, the whole change of atmosphere, the whole change of vibes, everything turned on its head came back here a different person, you know what I mean? Totally revved up, fired up, and with this can-do attitude, you know? Um, real talk. I would say it was born out there because some of the experiences that I had out there, I brought back to the UK. Um, as I said, that, that's, that's what's kind of motivated me, kind of prepped me up um, to be the, you know, the man that I am. Um, my passion is for young people especially in our community, you know, that's not sort of disrespecting any other communities, but I believe that we should, the African Caribbean community needs to be like a kind of show ripple effect. You know what I mean? Why can't we be seen for good things, for positive things, for upfront things, rather than, the, you know, projecting a negative narrative and a stereotype, you know, right from, from early days, you know, I've had businesses in the past, for example, one of my businesses was um, setting up the first, UK's first black baby food business, you know, um, looking at our, our, our young children and, and, and making sure they were eating the right things. You know what I mean? Channel it through. So that's the kind of ethic that I've always had. Um, I'm very passionate about paying it forward, paying the experiences that I've had forward into younger people so they don't go down the same roads, possibly make the same mistakes. Um, 
and just have a foundation, a, a, you know, a godly foundation. Because it, look, guys, there's a, there's a blueprint. There's a blueprint already set out there for us. It's whether we tap into it or not. I think that's what makes the difference. You know, as I said before, our, our, our um, vision is to be valued as, as an asset for a generation, um, to, to enhance us, to build ourselves up, um, to enhance our emotional intelligence, you know, to, to doing things like this, for example, where we can collaborate, talk, you know what I mean? Nice and gentle, nice and respectful with each other. We, we, you know, with constructive stuff, you know, we're not here to kind of sit with tackle and gossip and gossip, stir up issues, but then look for the positive outcomes. That's what I'm all about. Real Talk was set up, as I said, um, formally, I would say 2017. Um, and it's weird because I think that was just about a year after Manhood Academy, right? We did our first event up in, in Homerton, um, had a great turnout. And then from then I knew that, right, something's going to go on, something's going to move. Um, we've been going on since then, formally registered as a CIC 2019. And then, hey, we had lockdown, you know, but it didn't deter us. It hasn't deterred us. I think um, lockdown has actually helped us because if not for lockdown, I doubt if all of us would be like this now. Right. So we've been using social media. I've learned, I've been on a serious learning curve, you know, knowing how to, um, you know, get involved with, with social media from some of my team, people like Jade, people like Stephen, um, John, you know, JP, you know, there's, there's quite a few of us that, you know, Nana, we all helped to build this, the, the, yeah, put this vision together. So we're here today just to back up uh, Manhood Academy, back everyone up actually, and, and, you know, look for these solutions. Again, guys, not to be stirring up, um, the symptomatic stuff. We're looking to, you know, delve into the root issues. You know, real talk, we see ourselves, we pride ourselves on being um, experts, if you like, in, in sort of um, uprooting the, the, you know, the real issues of life, you know, identifying what they are, addressing them, and then looking to come with, you know, positive solutions, yeah? They're going to have that ripple effect right through the community. And I'm not just talking about young people. Adults also need it. There are certain issues of what we call unaddressed trauma. Um, and sometimes we don't even know that we're, we're experiencing trauma, yeah? And some of that even then filters into our children. So it's the whole thing. So we, we like to say, look, we're, we, you know, we're offering a bespoke mentoring service, you know, which means that we're out there to really meet people right at the point of their need, not ours. You know, as DJ said there, it's not about us trying to get props, trying to get views, trying to get likes and whatever. You know, this is a business. It's a, it's a serious entity. You know, and I'm, I'm glad that we, you know, I'm, I'm on board tonight. I it's, it's an absolute pleasure and privilege to be amongst so many like-minded people um, and you know, to look for a, a solution, look for the healing uh, solution to this flood through our whole, our whole community and others. Yeah, so that's me. Um, I'm sure through the course of the night, we're going to hear more about what we do from other members of the team. Um, but that's, that's that, you know, that's me for now. Thank you. Thank you. Very positive. Uh, thank you. My so name's much. Alex. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Alex, did you say? No, my name's Alex. Yeah, um, I work for the Home Office. Uh, just keep it that, but based on this thing in. Okay. Um, I work. Cool. I work with gun crime and youth uh, okay. criminal um, activities. So it's good. So maybe we can link up or something. Yeah, please do. Please do. So if anyone, I think going forward, if we have any comments and. Issues? Can we just drop maybe contact numbers and, and whatnot in in the chat? I think we've got um, yeah. a kind of questionnaire that's about as well. So if we can, if we can get that completed as well, just so that we can follow up on um, you know sort of comments like this, that'd be great. Thank you for that. Alex. Okay, no worries. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, bye. So so yeah, in the chat in the chat in the chat room now, I've just posted the uh, Google Forms link. Um, if you want to keep in touch with us, um, like at the end of this as well, we're going to compile some of the key points and then we're going to circulate it as well, um, just in terms of like takeaway moments. So if you want to be kept up to date with um, future engagements, please complete the, the Google Forms that's in the group at the moment. Well, we're just seeing a message, um, DJ, so to cut in, mate. It says that the, apparently the chat's disabled. Or is something not right about it? Something not, it's not, is it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of disabled. Mm. I, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping as well, where um, you might want to, people who who are speaking might want to take the notifications off of their devices because you can hear all the ringing, the different pinging that's coming up. Yeah, so oh, okay, if you want to keep is. it as a, rec a recorded uh, piece. Yes, and if you need to go to toilet, please just go. Yeah, so the fire exits, yeah? Yeah. So, so why are we yeah. here um, and why we're having this discussion? Because um, you know everything has got an intention and it's got a trigger. And 
you know, even though I work for organization, I'm also an individual. Um, and then I realized that there's limitations when you're an organization, but there's power when you're an individual, but you're connected with other individuals. So I got a call from a parent. This was just before, um, like with, with um, our co-hosts at the moment, um, Real Talk Mentors, we've not met them before. You know, I saw them on Instagram. I liked the things that they was putting out and I said, oh, I need to make contact with them. Um, and I remember this was a, a few weeks ago again, I got a call from my mum. My mum was just crying down the phone and she came to me for answers. Answers that I could not answer. <laughs> Being genuine, I could have baffled and I could have said, yeah, and sound all smart, but it was not an answer to her saving her son. Um, mm. Yeah, her son, like, I'm just hoping that he's okay. He's, you know, it's one of them ones. I don't want to get into, into the depth of it because I don't want to trigger nobody, but it's a real, real um, bad situation. And I was just like, I can't do this by myself. It's long. I don't like doing it, but I don't want to. I've never tried to do it, but it's about working with black minds. Um, mm. So straight away, I went into Instagram and, I, and again, real talk mentors and our panelists as well are people that I, I can draw upon for strength. And straight away, it made sense to me that the woman that phoned me, the amazing mum, she's not alone. There's other parents out there, mums and dads. Um, Ishmael came on, the came on earlier. He didn't even say hello. It's just like, he needs it. Like, the passion is real. The passion, it's, it's real, it's real, it's real. And we are allowed to get passionate. Um, so, yeah, if people do go on a tangent, that's fine. Um, and, yeah, that's, that's okay. But what we do have to do, we do have to introduce our panellists at the moment, just so everyone is aware. And then we can go into um, a discussion. Um, yeah, we're going to try and steer the discussion the best we can. But let's try and focus on the solutions today. Um, what works? What can we do? And, and what can we do as a collective, not by yourself? Because we all know that <laughs> we, we've got this as an individual. But working together has not really been a strength. Um, so um, I'm going to introduce Brother Nana. Um, where's Brother Nana? Is he there? Yeah, yes, I'm here, I'm here. yes, yeah. yes. If you just want to introduce yourself, um, my esteemed panelist, um, to the audience, I'll give you about five five minutes approximately, and uh, and then after will be Sister Mott. Just so Sister Mott, you've got a little heads up, yeah. Um, over to you, brother Nana. Yes, good evening, everyone. So my name is Nana. Um, I'm a qualified social worker. Um, I'm currently a deputy team manager for a frontline child protection team. So I've had a lot of experience. Um, working with um, a lot of young people um, and I think for me to come here and speak um, is amazing because you know I can also give you know my perspective in terms of working within the system being aware um, of kind of the barriers in terms of statutory kind of intervention um, but in terms of where I began so before I qualified I worked as a young person advocate for my local authority representing um, young people whereby there may have been issues within the family home and from there that was kind of my avenue and steps to go in to become a social worker um, and pretty much what we're going to discuss today is pretty much the bread and butter you know I've pretty much worked these cases worked with a lot of these young people um, you know who pretty much gang affected or county lines had to place them out of London to I could say Manchester to Wales um, so very much on board with Kind of the issues at hand but also you being a young black male myself being able to identify with what they're going through maybe in terms of when i'm going to those kind of senior arena arenas those above me may not be able to understand so you know i met with uncle solo sometime last year in terms of real talk because i could really see the vision in terms of the change that he wants to put forward and i'm pretty much on board and wanted to kind of push that forward um you know in terms of working with our young people there's a lot of work that needs to be um, done but i do like what we've got here i think partnership is very very important um you know and uh, actually within the pandemic we actually can't be working in isolation our young we are young black men um they are the next generation so we need to give them the solid foundation you know we've got a lot of adults here from different backgrounds um different experiences you know you know is very much family orientated and i believe that actually that needs to be the way forward. So yeah, very much passionate, very much driven, and hopefully we can use the platform to actually make some changes. Thank you. Good, thanks, Nana. Greetings, uh, my name is Sister Mutt. I'm a mother to three sons, um, born 2000, 2009, and 2014. 
Um, I'm a professional birthing partner. So I've been a professional birthing, what is called a doula, holistic doula uh, for 18 years now. And I'm also a free birther, a woman who's had her children with no midwife by choice. And um, I'm also a relational evolution coach, which I deal with ascension of relationships and the spectrum, if you like, uh, of relationships down to the toxic relationships. Um, I have a background in being a parent governor um, and I um, am now a home educator since uh, the very first lockdown. So um, I'm, I'm really interested in this conversation um, as a doula because women in childbirth are often ushered into their childbirth with people like myself and the community around them. And I am a strong believer that childbirth, you know, education, parenting becomes, comes before birth, yeah, before the baby is born. And that comes down to who's around them, who's supporting them, looking at the mentors around them. And so, and I'm really interested in men engaging in supporting their, each other to father, to father well, and um, and strengthen that bond before children come along into the physical world. So I my work allows me to nurture that and nourish that. But then there's no one currently that I can go to. And hopefully this is what this is about too for, for us in collabing in this way is that there's a way in which the masculine, uh, the work that I do includes a lot of the masculine and feminine principle. So I have a role as a female of nurturing the male and nurturing the female in the work that I do. And I'm very humbled and blessed to do it. But there needs to be after I'm not there, after there are um, different factors uh, and the times that we're in with this pandemic, it really does mean that community and networking and support structures are very, very important. I've just recently stopped working um, with an organization that was dealing with domestic abuse and domestic violence and inside of the lockdown domestic abuse domestic violence has gone up 25 percent yes it's the very first lockdown so these things can only cascade if they are not supported so, yeah I'm glad to be here thank you for inviting me to come um, but yeah this is uh, an important message especially for the sons that we have and the sons that I have and all the sons around the world Thanks for that, Sister Mutt. Can you hear me? Sure, thank you. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> sorry, okay, sorry. I'm no, sorry. I was, I, no, sorry, I was, I wasn't waiting. Uh, I'm not waiting for a reaction from you. Sorry, Sister Mutt. I'm just saying <laughs> generally, generally, yeah, generally. No, sorry, I'll start going into seriousness. No, 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 you're fine. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. No, thanks for that. Thanks for that. You, yeah, you, you, did, you did well. You did well. Your notes, your notes came in handy. Then I see yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you kept it real. Yeah, Didn't bang on time. Know. Yeah. <laughs> so passionate. No, so well passionate. done. Love that. Love that. Love that. Love that. Love that. And it's unique. It's unique what you do, uh, Sister Mike. Seriously, love that. Love that. Thank you for that. Mm. All right, our and next, our next, um, our next uh, guest special panelist. Then um, we're going to introduce Juan Lopez, Mr. Juan Lopez, who's um, representing Steel Warriors. He's a community manager. Are you there, sir? Yes, brother. How are you doing, everyone? Greetings, um, greetings, brother. Good to have you on board, man. Greetings and thank you for the invitation. Um, I've, I've, I'm just uh, caught up by the minute timing. I'm making my way home, but I'm, I'm, I hope that's all right with everyone. I'm, I just introduced myself and then I'm going to listen into the conversation. Yep. But very quickly, just um, obviously, I'm humbled to be invited. Um, I'm the community manager of the Warriors. Um, it's a charity that's um, you know we're quite embedded in the community, working with young people. The main concept behind the work I do is that I, I collect a lot of the uh, knives that get taken off the streets and we melt those knives and build uh, outdoor street gyms. Um, and through those gyms, uh, Brother Davis and I met, I don't know, I think uh, I recognize some people as well uh, on the call that I've met down at the, the community gyms. Uh, and a lot of the work is focused around empowering um, everyone, realistically, anyone and everyone, not just young people but children and, and adults and mature adults mm. um, and the way we empower them is by encouraging a culture of growth through fitness so we, we use fitness as a vehicle to to teach 
people how to achieve goals. And that's what uh, leads the majority of the work I personally do with young people. So I work across care homes, uh, referral units, and, um, and, and youth offending services, probation services. And we deliver a specific program that, um, as I mentioned, is, is practically through fitness and specifically calisthenics, which is body weight training. We uh, educate young people um, to help them understand what they need to do to apply themselves to see through on a goal. And we use fitness as, 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 as that the way to teach them that, but the objective is that from, from what happens to, and what we've learned through the work that we've been doing is that when we allow young people to discover, you know, or, 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 or achieve something that at first they, they thought was impossible. So, you know, a lot of the exercises we get young people to um, make as a goal, it's something that they believe they cannot do. But once they do achieve it, and Brother Davis, you know, is, is witnessed this, you know, down at Finsbury Park where, where we've uh, worked together, mentoring young, young men and young women uh, in the community, is that a lot of the time, just the simple fact of achieving a fitness goal can really turn the life around of a young person because that sense of achievement and that empowerment they get from, from, from that experience is something that really does lead them to believe um, that they can go on to pursue or, or, or that they have options practically because a lot of young people that, especially that I work with, I find that the reason that they're involved in crimes and they're selling drugs and they're doing the things that they do, in essence, is because they're trying to improve their quality of life, be it financially, emotionally, or or in any other way that they, they seem to be lacking. And it's when they believe there's no other opportunity aside from what they see in their local environment and the, the references of success, that can sometimes lead them to believe that, you know, that's the only option. But when we actually get to connect with young people that we actually work with and we actually listen to them, and this is the thing about fitness and the environment we have at these field warrior gyms is that young people do open up and they start talking to us and they start saying what the real aspirations are. The only reason they don't pursue them, you know, is because sometimes they, they don't have that confidence or belief and they almost seem that that aspiration is almost like an impossible thing to achieve, you know, the amount young people that realistically they'd rather be you know rappers or or, or you know or, or in, you know doing something you know going to education even guys I like drawing and, and you know they don't think drawing is actually uh, a talent they just think it's a hobby and and you know what we're trying to show them is that you know what if they learn how to achieve goals and learning how to kind of put a plan in place but more importantly how to apply your mind to see through on it that's, that's really and truly where you unlock their power. And, and, and that's the work really and truly I focus because the, the more, you know, the more I work with young people, I see that it's a case of empowering them to believe that they can do something better and, and, and they can achieve and improve their quality of life, you know, by, by realizing their potential and their talents, really. So, I, 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 yeah, guys, like, you know, I love working with young people. Um, main reason for me is because I grew up involved in crime and I know the motives and the mindset that drove me to do what I did and I guess I had a lucky break that I, I got given an ultimatum to either go to the army or go to prison and I went to the army thinking I was going to do just minimal time but I actually ended up doing nine and a half years and and it taught me a lot and I managed to excel in that career but now that I've come out of the army and back into the community I really want to bring a lot of what I learned there and, and you know, to, to, to just normal young people. And that's what we got the programs that we run. And, you know, we're just, I'm just, you know, keen to learn more about existing community leaders that are like-minded and are also passionate about helping young people in terms of mm. what opportunities there are to collaborate, to really build a, a network, a comprehensive network of support for all young people in our communities in that area. So that's kind of like my vision. And, and why I, I connect and I, and I join, you know, uh, workshops like this and, 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 and yeah, I, I'm just here to learn and hopefully, yeah, see how uh, I can bring value to, to our community in general. So, yeah, I'm just able to do Amen, here. brother. Amen. Okay, Amen. bro, thanks for that. Thanks for that. Yeah. Beautiful.
Yeah, thank you for that. Um, we're going to go straight into the um, the next panelist, and then we can like um, show some show some love afterwards. But it's brother um, uh, Ishmael. He is from the the Salam Project, and yeah, is he here? Some I know he's here, um, but I can't see my him. Brother. Yes. First yes, of all, I'd like can. to apologise for my outburst earlier on. I just I thought it was <laughs> misunderstood. So it was no, no you disrespect just, you were my just No, you were just excited, bro. No, it's no yeah, problem, so I, man. Yeah. I want to make that clear because, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? So, so I apologise for that. So first of all, I'm, I'd say I'm honoured and grateful to be honoured to be allowed to be on this panel because as many people I see in the chat and in the panel well, very experienced in this field of work. So my name's Ishmael Lee Self. Originally, when I left school, I was working in banking. So I had aspirations to work in banking and stock trading. That was my, that was my goal and intention. Um, Amen. Due I to know. my, <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry, oh, okay. sorry. Yes, Mr. I'm just, I'm coming there. So sorry. Basically, then due to my nephew and my cousins getting involved in so-called gang crime and issues, um, by default, they got me involved in youth work, and then. When doing some volunteer youth work, I thought to myself, why don't I just set up my own organization? So when I first started, the initial intention was just to do youth outreach into schools, youth offending teams, um, crews and so forth. And then it naturally evolved into doing occasional mentoring and tutoring. So over the years, I've acquired a brilliant 15 volunteers, trusted volunteers who are brilliant, who are excellent, and they mentor and they do tutoring, and they do outreach, and they work with me in the Salam Project. So I'm born and bred in London and everything, but they say, happy wife, happy life. My wife's from Manchester, so I, I live in Manchester. So I live and work between London and Manchester. And that's the work that I do. So I'm all about solutions, and I'm glad to be here and salute to Manhood Academy, Brother Davis, know from 19, long time. And yes, whatever, is happening, I would love to be part of it in any which way I can. Thank you. Thanks for that, brother. Before we do the next one, can I, before we do the next intro, can I just um, flick back slightly, just for 30 seconds, brother Ishmael. Um, yes, sir. Some synergy, brother, you, you know, you mentioned Manchester. That used to be yes, a, a, a kind of little old stomping ground for me. I have fond memories of Manchester. Um, I've been to Nigeria twice as well. Oh, amen. You see, so, it's, it's, it's some links. There's some links going on. Some links going on. No, some links going on. No, but seriously, Manchester is a place where it was named after another Chester back in the day. I'm going back to like the nineties and that. You know the school. You know where I'm coming from, brother. Yeah. So you know what I mean. A lot of the stuff we were doing there in the community, in the clubs and whatnot. And um, we're seeing in London now. I would suggest, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, what we saw in Manchester like 20, 30 years ago. Yes. Yeah, so amen. It's just, amen. Um, amen. You know, just to, just to flick that in, but yeah, thank you, thank you. Just let you know, there's also a brother in here. I'll be real with you, even though I've moved to Manchester, the man who's very knowledgeable is in the chat here. I'm very honored to see him here. His brother Moy, okay. um, Imoy, sorry, Imoy, and he's a brilliant resource in Manchester. I hope he makes himself known, and he's the main man in Manchester. In Mossai. Cool. Okay, okay, let the link up, keep a link, okay. Okay, thanks for that, brother. Um, brother Davis. Yes, my bro. Yeah, so the next person um, that we're going to introduce to the panel is uh, um, Elaine Isadora Thomas from the Mentoring Lab. Where is she there? Where are you at, my queen? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Uh, if I start talking you about me. you, I'll, I'll be here all day. So I'm just going to let you do the talking and you can introduce yourself, mm. sis, if that's cool. Fine. Thank you for having me um, to both Davis and Real Talk Mentors. Do you know what? I've always wanted to sit on a panel with other mentoring organisations and other mentoring wow. um, practitioners. So <laughs> thank you for making yeah. this happen. Just to kind of give you what I'm all about and then about Mentoring Lab and, and some of my history in less than five minutes. Um, I've been, since, since working in the youth sector, um, and my journey began in 2000, I've always wanted the community to come out of our nine to fives where we work on a full-time or part-time basis and offer services directly to the community because we can do more with young people. I'm not saying that working with um, local authorities or charities or 
you know top uh, youth organizations doesn't do well it's just that we can we can do more and we understand more about the communities so I hope that anybody that's on this platform that is um, working with young people connect with all of us that are on the panel especially Manhood Academy um, the Salam project and Real Talk Mentors because I, I think these guys are going to really change the community youth work industry so thank you for having me a part of this panel. So my name's Elaine Thomas. I like to put the Isadora in there because I just feel like it gives me a little piece of value, right? Um, and the reason why it gives me a little piece of value is because my middle name is also my grandma and my great grandma's middle name. And they really um, steerheaded um, our family and were inte integral like components to the communities in Jamaica and I feel like I'm literally carrying the torch so I have my middle name there to remind me of the mothers that that led the way. Um, I set up the mentoring lab in 2017 after being totally frustrated with being a youth practitioner for um, charities and within um, the local authorities um, and just knew that with the understanding I have of our community and understanding what young people are going through and the values that they had, I just felt like I could offer more um, working independently from local authorities and charities, youth charities, um, and set up the mentoring lab. Since 2017, um, just to kind of give you a figure actually, last year, so I've got the numbers down, from 2019 to 2020, we engaged with about 150 sorry 550 young people one of the reasons that we were able to work with so many young people even though we're new is because we do summer programs um we have a team of i have a team of about 12 mentors we still need more black male mentors um but we have tutors we have mentors we are always doing um mentoring training we are always upskilling the youth workers that that work for the mentoring lab um, and we offer like five key services. So the first one obviously is mentoring, it's in our title, but we, um, we have a, a mentoring framework that fits into lots of different activities that young people like. So any mentor that works with us, different to most other mentoring organizations, they have to follow our framework because our framework is evidence-based and it also really empowers the young person so that after the mentoring period, the young person, if they want to, they can remember the tool that their mentor did with them and can do it for themselves. What we do find is when we're working with the young people and we're, we're going through our mentoring toolkit, the parents are like, oh, can I, can I have a toolkit? Can, can I do that activity? And of course we always say yes, because we work alongside parents as well. So we obviously do mentoring. We also have a fantastic online after school club, which runs every week. We've got different um, project-based learning activities that is online. You can sign up if you want to. Um, some of them are free, some of them are at minimal cost. Um, we also um, do detached youth work in the summer. So we run, I don't know if anybody here is from Greenwich or lives in Greenwich, but we deliver the Greenwich Summer Youth Programme for a charity called Futureversity. Um, and we're subcontractors for that. Um, we also, tutor and support parents whose children are at risk of exclusion, school exclusion, and have a special educational need, whether that be diagnosed or undiagnosed. And we've successfully helped um, a number of cases take their young person out of school and go into a new school that can support their needs better. Um, we also do youth, um, youth mentoring training. And we, I did one for Brother Davis just um, I think it ended a couple of weeks ago and we've got another one happening for, I don't know if you guys have heard of UK Youth, but we've got another one happening with them on Tuesday. Um, I think that's the five services. I think I've gone through all of them. That's what we do. Um, my background is not in London. It was in Hertfordshire St Albans. And um, I, it, right, we ju I just looked at some figures for Hertfordshire St Albans, right? And in year 11, there's about 30 young people. Now, when I was growing up and I, I left my secondary school in 1995, there I had a group of 12 friends. So imagine that we were like literally half of the black population that was for our age group. And only three of us made it out 
the other nine are in a really bad state, even though we're all in our mid forties, like really bad state. So when I um, had my son, I was scared because I was in a harsher environment than I was in country. London is a different playing ground, right? So the first thing I did was get, got a doula. I took my parenting so seriously. I had a doula and um, she helped me through my pregnancy. She, she kind of showed me how I could pattern, if you know them young words, how I could pattern my child from in the womb. And I did, right? Um, then um, whilst he was young, like a baby, I, I took him to a school where they, where they taught young children to meditate. Like he went to a nursery school and they taught him to meditate. I also gave him a vegan diet. I mean, he di he's not a vegan diet on a vegan diet now. He literally is just thrown all of that out the window. But then when he was, when he was about six or seven, I made the decision to go to Jamaica with him. And we moved and lived in Jamaica for just over a year. And I did that because I desperately wanted him to have a higher standard, like a higher mindset when it came to education. And I was scared with what I saw working in schools in London. So he moved to Jamaica, he went to school in Jamaica um, and he, in, he, he took on the culture so much that he's like lying to people when we came back and he used to tell people, yeah, 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 I was born in Jamaica. And I'm like, no, you're not, no, you weren't. But he loved Jamaica so much. Um, and then when, we, when he was ready to go to um, um, primary school here in the UK, I found a school and it was just by chance, but I found a school that was headed um, by a black man and he went into that um, junior school. Then when he went to secondary school, I made sure he went to secondary school outside of the borough because people call it gangs, it's actually friendship groups. And I just didn't want him to get caught in the, 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 the antics that they get up to when they left school and they're walking home. So I sent him out of the borough so he'd have further to try. Seriously, if you speak to him now, he hates me. He hates me because now he knows why I did everything. Now he knows why he had a group of friends and he doesn't really speak to them anymore. When he was in secondary school, I moved him from, he first went to a creative school, then I moved him to an engineering school. He hated me again. Um, but the reason why I did all of that is that he kept on leaping over traps and I had to. So at the moment he's doing his GCSEs and he's 16 years old. Um, but what I've, what I've done with him is really, um, something that I put into the mentoring lab and that's everything we do is talking about careers like I introduced careers to him at a very early age um, and that's what we do at the mentoring lab from the age of eight we're introducing um, careers and and the talents that the young people have at a very early age we believe that our young people need 15 to 20 years head start you know so that they can do well and they can provide for their families um, when they're, you know, in their 20s or 30s. Um, so that's, that's, that's me, that's the mentoring lab. And I always say to people, I don't tell my story, but I'm good with um, the hardest of hardest to reach young people, boys and girls for a, for a good reason. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it really. Thank you for that sister. Very eloquently well put, love it. I know you've got a lot more to say, but, um, you know, just in the interest of time, we're capping it a little bit, but I'm sure you're going to be um, questioned or, or spoken to later on through the evening. So thanks for that. Respect for that. Thank you. Yeah, so the next person is um, Emmanuel um, from First Sport. Where are you at, my bro? I'm here, brother. I'm here, oh, brother. Oh, yes, 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 I'm yes, here. yes. First thing I'd like to say is thank you, everybody. And I'm sending my love and blessings to everybody, hoping everyone's good and keeping safe. And it's you first, Davis. <laughs> and <Kids laughs> Academy. But we'll talk about that. <laughs> so, oh, no, right. I'm, in, I'm in trouble now, man. I'm in trouble now, man. <laughs> nah, it's cool. yeah. I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible, because if I start, I'll it'll be the next day and I'll still be here. So where do I start? <laughs> uh, my name is Emmanuel. I'm from East London, Forest Gate. So my thing is I'm a youth worker, football coach, mentor as well. So basically I was, um, I could say I was a victim of knife crime, victim of uh, gun culture and stuff like that. I was, grew up in that 
being like that. But what I realised all through going growing up and whatever it was, if it be selling drugs, robbing, stealing cars, there was one thing, even, and me, I'm from Ghanaian descent, both parents, lived in a nice house, home, everything like that. But the one thing, obviously, you know, you've got that pool with your friends. There was one thing that I can honestly say that saved my life, and that was football. I had a love of football that was stronger than anything. So that was the one thing I always held on to. So Davis will know, we used to, I could be anywhere and I'd still always be at football. I could be in the maddest of places and always end up in football. So I basically went through that, but then obviously left school. Amen. W- Amen. Wanted to, wanted to do football. Couldn't, didn't quite work out. So um, what I started to do was do a lot of youth working and stuff like that. And then um, actually got, um, I worked and got a job in a school as a PE teacher. So I was doing PE in school. Then it was noticing that, you know, it's the, I don't like to say it, the usual, the, the young black boys, they're always getting sent out and stuff like that. So I, was thinking, I just couldn't get my head around it. So I was like, what is it then? What I started to notice as well, there's a lot of, to do with relationships and trust in it. So a lot of the teachers and people in the school, it's what you see. If you they see me and they can identify and say, well, I know Emmanuel Manners or Coach Will Estate. I know he's been here and he's been there and he's come out to be a school teacher or he's come out to be a B teacher. And he's gone on to do that. So what I clocked is that relationships and trust is a big, big thing, as well as obviously parents but we'll get into that that's a whole bit they've got a lot to answer for as well but as, I was just wondering why it kept happening so obviously I started to talk to them individually one-on-one and start doing a couple of groups that then eventually what I started to do is um in Forest Gate I actually um started doing a football program in um Forest Gate school where basically um I don't know if you know about Newham but we've got a, the gang culture there is is just off the chart it's ridiculous but what we were actually doing because Davis was actually there he helped me start it as well so we was getting all the young people, anywhere you lived in Newham, you could come and play football. That was your safe space for an hour and a half, two hours, whatever it was. And then what we was trying to do is empower them and saying, obviously not all of them could be footballers, but we're saying, look, you might be able to go for a trial. You might be a physiotherapist. You could be an agent. If you like sport, if you had that love for the sport yeah. and football. So that's what we was trying to do. So obviously I'll be all day. We've sent players here, there, all over. Some have gone here and there. So, well, I was realising that that works with football, but I was like, yeah, we need to do that with other things. So I started to try and do it with music as well. So I had a person who, um, who was on the radio in Bedford and we started to do a programme with that. So we was getting people, if they wanted to do music, they can go into do music and stuff like that. But then what we was realising is that obviously it's the same thing, music, football, all the sports. So then obviously, and we do a lot of outreach as well. So obviously when we're talking to a lot of people, a lot of the young people, They've all got dreams and aspirations, but there's always there's always a barrier. I can't do this because of that. So what my thing was, you can do whatever you want. We just need to help you in it. So you've got to find out what it is you really, really love. What will make you right now come off the road right now? And some of the people, some one person said to me, cooking. And I nearly collapsed. And I was like, wow. And this, this was a young person in school because he kept getting kicked out of the classes. I was thinking, what is it? So then when I found that out, we put him on a program. And basically what he does now, he, he helps the school and they do the menus and stuff like that. But then I was realizing as well, the teachers as well, they don't, there's not much of a link. So we set up a program now as well, where we train the teachers to actually speak and understand the young people in the city children. So they know the words. So they know if they're, oh, no, what's going on coach? Oh, no, what a pattern that thing. And they pick up the language. So once they start to talk to them like that, they will kind of engage with them a bit more. So it's that you start earning their trust and stuff like that. So basically, like I said, I don't even want to start. I'm going to start going. <laughs> I don't know, but basically, that's what we do. And then we've got, yeah. um, that's, that's what we do, the King's Academy. That's what we call it. So we say, turning our young boys into kings. So you love yourself and you go on to do whatever you want to do. And the other thing we do is um, youth first, which basically youths. We just, I'm frontline. I'm what you see. What you should get with me is, I will go into the estate and mm. talk to the boys. Not all of them can be saved. That's one thing. But mm. I put them like in three categories. You can get the 30, 30% of boys who are just not on it. They're just going to be, they have friends who are around it, but they're always going to go home and do the right thing. Then you've got the, others, the other 30% who are friends with them, but they have something. So they might be going to the studio, they're going football. So they're not really on it. And then you've got the other 30, I don't want to say are lost. They're the ones you really need to, to work on. But I use them as in, if you love your bridging, you tell him 
to go home and go and do football because you wanted to do better. So I tried to use them to help them. So it's like a domino effect, isn't it, kind of thing. So basically, that's it in a nutshell. And then really quickly as well, the next thing that we're doing at the moment is that we've been um, um, contacting the local um, police stations in the area. And what we're doing now is that, um, you know, we've got loads of stolen bikes and that. We're doing like a bike program where the young people come and they do a program, learn how to fix up bikes. They fix up their individual bikes. We put a tracker in the bike where the parents have that on the phone and they use the bikes to go from A to B. So if in school, home, back, but the parents always know where they are. You, you, your bike is individual to you. So no one else in the borough will have that bike. So it's another way of kind of keeping track of where they are and making them come back. So that is me in a nutshell. In about Thank five. you. No, you got <laughs> it. No, bro, right listen, yeah, brother so Emmanuel, yeah. now you're on point, bro. You got it right on time, on the nail, bro. On, okay. the, on, on, on the button, as they say. Look, I'm... I'm impressed, man. Look, we, we hit time, people. We're, we're all on it. You know, no, <laughs> nobody should ever say that we people don't keep time because right now we're, we're right in the zone. So, you know, like, I'm just going to introduce the last... Um, no, but seriously, uh, before I introduce... Thanks for that, um, Emmanuel. That's yes, proper man. stuff, on point stuff. Okay. I like to keep using this talk, real talk. It is real talk. And real that's, talk, that's, you know, yeah. That's how it's going. Um, yeah. Yeah, but just to introduce um, a member of our team, the real talk team, he's actually... Uh, um, you know, solid brother, um, JP. He's um, he's taken up the mantle of um, he's like second to me in the organisation, should I say? He's the, the director of operations. Um, there's other members of the Real Talk team here, so I'm not trying to disrespect them as well. But they'll be, I'm sure there's going to be other panels, isn't there, JP? That they're going to be um, party to a uh, later stage, but there's obviously time for questions and whatnot. But JP, do you want to step up, sir? Just um, give a little intro about yourself. And um, um, you know what's moved you? Of course, um, I'm part of Real Talk, exactly like every person on this platform. Um, I've had enough of seeing the same old story, but I'm also a believer that everyone can get, if you're going to use the word "sick," or everyone can be inspired. So I'm not really going to start with my strengths. I more start with my experiences. So as a child. Uh, was exposed to things children should not be exposed to. Some may call it abuse or whatnot. Had the two parents, uh, my mum, overachiever, dad, underachiever. Grew up in the dynamics of a two-parent household, but not present parents of African descent. But at the same time, born in the UK, so you've got that confusion of identity. Um, very high achiever academically, very great sportsman, got involved in drugs, got involved in, if you want to call it friendship groups or gangs. By the age of 20, I'm on the run for murder. Was on a run for a few years, handed myself back in, uh, went jail, went jail for a few years, uh, only come, came out recently. And again, while in jail, this is where I took up my kind of mantle, if we're going to say that, where I've noticed my inspiration for young people not to make the same decisions. Also, there's a word in that I use for a lot of delinquent men. So a lot of men that don't know what their jobs is or what their role is. They don't understand what it is to be a father, what it is to be a man, what it is to be a brother. They don't understand these things. So this is what I noticed in jail. Also, I done my courses, my peer mentoring. So in Joe, I started being more hands-on. And I realized this problem varies from 60-year-old to 18-year-old. So I done all my mentoring. I was a listener. I used to help people read and write. I used to help people come off drugs. I was violence reduction. I done every single thing. And then, and why I say this, because I'm a living example. So I can give you a real life practical <laughs> steps as to what these experiences feel like this is not theory this is practical this is me being in it understanding it this is me having man them who i still speak to now some are active some are not active this is me coming out of jail after losing over a decade of my life and telling you the things that i face trying to fix trying to work on my life now i'm deemed very successful and I understand the steps that it takes to do that. At the same time, understanding the struggle of having exposure and seeing things and experiencing things that people may not necessarily understand, understanding the transition of now 
coming into, if you're going to call it manhood or representing myself in a particular way. And me and Real Talk right now, like we really are going to affect real, real change. I'm passionate about that. Like I will never give up on this one for one second. I'm very passionate about understanding like the new one that I've been discovering right now, the struggles that a lot of women are going through. The amount of women that have been abused that don't even know that it's abuse. The identity issues around women. So I'm learning that a lot recently because I'm also a personal trainer. So I deal with a lot of people. And when you talk to people, you realize the needs of people. And like everyone here, we want to be in positions where we can address the needs of people. And for me, Real Talk has and is serving that purpose for me now to say, okay, I want to be more hands-on approach. And Shola will explain to you, I'm a, I'm a man of structure, I'm a man of planning. And I like to put practical steps. I am tired of just talking. I'm tired of the same old cycle, talking, talking, everyone with good intentions, but not really making that much of a difference. So it's all about now creating practical steps, really causing change. And I'm a big believer that it has to start with you as well. I can't inspire somebody to be better than they are if I myself are whatless. So now about me honestly saying, okay, this is where I am. It strives me to push forward, but also like he always says, passing down the mountain, the, the mantle to others now for them also to say, wow, this guy's experienced all of this and he can still get up out of bed every day and go for it. Boy, it must not be too late for me. And that's probably my desire if I, when I talk to any single person is that I do not believe for one second that it's too late for any single person. I believe that everyone's got something to bring and everyone's got something to achieve. It's just helping find that. So that's me in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah thanks for that, JP. <clears throat> I, don't think I just get... want to say thank yeah. you for sharing that. That was very emotional. Um, the way for... um, he's absolutely right. Um, you know, the way for, you know, um, and I do really honestly believe that um reach out get out you know do certain things you know the things that i do you know um oh sorry my name's alex by the way yeah i'm just getting involved sorry um, no thanks that's cool yeah, no way yeah. alex no that's cool thank you thank you thank you no way yeah okay. thanks for that jp as well i don't think we can get realer than that you know it's, it's, it's real issues we're talking about but again as jp said just to reiterate we don't we don't want to be here tonight and just talking. You know, the talk has got to lead to some action. It's got to lead to to making a step. <clears throat> you know, and um, you know, DJ and myself, have, you know, we've been around this, we've been on this, and at the end of the evening, I'm going to give the game away. But at the end of the evening tonight, we're going to announce um, a an initiative that hopefully will be um, taking that first step. But I think now, um, DJ, what do you reckon? I think we're up up in time for the more open discussion where we can put questions across either to the panel or basically generally anybody who's on board. I think housekeeping, housekeeping, I can't even say the word, housekeeping, anybody just to keep some kind of order and keep it in a, in a certain way. Questions, can we can we, can we we put those in the chat and then uh, anyone who wants to say anything or question something, we can put it in there and then um, um, DJ and myself can pull those questions out. And you know, Is that okay, uh, DJ? And then just put them across like that because I think otherwise it's going to be, it's gonna be <laughs> it'll get a bit manic. I think everybody's got a lot to say tonight in terms of, you know what I mean, and really get to the core of what we want to talk about and then look for those, um, you know, look for these um, potential solutions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I agree 100%, you know, I agree 100%. Yeah? Yes. Okay, so we, if we go straight in then, I mean, I'm going to ask, can I put this question out to, um, I'm just going to, anyway, okay, um, Jade, sorry, I've not introduced, Jade, I'm going to introduce a couple of the team, Jade here, Stephen. You see, also, I think they're gonna and John, um, Keith, Tim, and Tatiana. So, I think we've already briefed before. In terms of questions, you can you know put your stuff in the in the chat and then have a chance to ask anybody. Yeah, but I want to put a first question out. Can we go on mute, please? What do you want on mute? Thank you. Yeah, first question out then. I want to start off really in terms of cycles. So we've talked a lot, we've, we've mentioned labels. You know, we mentioned um, gang, which is obviously, you know, we're trying to form that in, as, as a friendship group. I want to put this out there. How do, how do we start by dismantling the negative stereotypes, the labels that don't even belong to us? These are labels that have been given to us, but we've taken them on board and, and we're using them ourselves. How do we shape these up? So it's the stereotypes, 
the labels and the cycles. Now I want to put that out there to um, one of the panel members. Um, Sister Mutz, please. Can I just ask you that and then have a couple sure. of minutes, a couple of minutes to respond and then we can, yeah, just keep keep the flow. Sure. Going. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so how I raised my sons personally, I've had different points being a single mother, married, all sorts of different dynamics, right? But I've always raised my children on the work of Joanza Kunjufu. And he says. Um, when you're raising young boys in particular, he, he, he writes Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys if you don't know the book, right? And, um, and he talks about the importance of young people having, yes, aspiration, but because young people do not, um, they do not respect academics, yeah? This is, my eldest is an academic, he's a high achiever, and this was the way I mold, helped to mould him, if you like, right? So... He talks about if your child, you want your children to have academics, their, their peers will not be, will not respect that. Therefore, it's important to engage your child in a sport or martial art almost to cover the academics so that they can still have that because they're not going to be popular for being academic. Yeah. So it's important for us to engage in, yes, their strengths and aspirations, but it's important for them, their labels, their peer group, you know, they'll call them Niki or they'll call them all these different names that they come up with when they're in, when they're in a child, a young person is intelligent. Yeah. So, yes, there's lots that our pa as parents we have to do. Yeah. In terms of engaging in young, young people's strengths at a very young age from very, very young. Yeah. Primary school tap into their education in primary school. That is the key, a key point, yeah, the zero to seven, the formative years, yeah. In terms of when it comes down to stereotyping, we also, ca we carry a lot of these labels because we're not changing anything. We quite, we like being um, considered, my, you know, a lot, I hear a lot of parents talking about, well, my son's SEN, my son's this, my son's statemented. We engage in that conversation a lot. As a parent governor, we have to understand that at, 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 when I was a parent governor, one of the things I learned is how much young people are cash cow, yeah? And so SCNs, all of those types of things. So we have to look at them. If they've got dyslexia, I'm considered a mild dyslexic then, though I fell through the net school, yeah? Now, what I've learned about the gift of dyslexia, yeah, is that, and there's a book around that, is we have to understand the school system already is not designed. It's actually designed, the infrastructure was designed for females because females were not in, allowed to have an education. It was actually designed in an auditory fashion for girls to succeed and not boys. So it's already, yeah, at the forefront of a boy's education. Teaching them communication, I can only talk about my own children in this aspect. Personally, again, going back to youth and to how young they are is, I used to teach my sons baby sign language when they were young, yeah? Boys in particular need baby sign language, yeah? And people might think this is not relevant, but it is because those two years, a child does not speak mainly for two years. So they're taking in things, everything internally, yeah? So therefore it's really, really important that our children go into school with another language. So signing, one of the strengths of all three of my children one of the things that the teachers always say is, oh, they're very good communicators. So you engage them in communicating from a very, very young age and identifying their needs from very young. Okay, Sister Mott, thanks, thanks for that. I think um, over to, um, um, to Brother Davis. I think, yeah, that's um, well put there. I think there's going to be some, some follow-up to what, you, what you've answered there, Sister Mott, but I think um, DJ wants to come in with, with something now. Yeah, what I was going to ask, because, um, yeah, we've got um, some amazing individuals on our, on our panel, and I just wanted everyone just to um, just send a quick message in the chat room, you know, just to send some energy, because, you know, just like the brother spoke, um, I can't remember, is it JP? JP. And you, you, you could hear his passion, do you know what I mean? You could hear that passion being directed with such mm. clarity and articulation, and I feel it's important that we just reverse a bit, and then, yeah, just um, throw up some numbers, you can put a five, 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 just like shower the chat, um, because it's important that when we hear things of um, of that kind of energy, right. that we respond a certain way to keep the energy flowing. Um, 
because I know what it's like. like. I put in some mad work for some children and sometimes the parents don't even say thank you. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. I've put in all that energy and there's like a sense of entitlement. So whenever we we, we receive flowers, yeah. whenever we receive flowers, say thank you. So yeah, the panel just shared some flowers with everyone. And yeah, just a, it could be a, a little bomb. It could be a little spark. It could be a little peace sign or fist or you know, whatever. Do you know what I mean? I think it's very important. Um, and also, Big up yourselves, everyone, for being here. Like you've dedicated your time. You could be watching, you know, I don't know what's on now. Is it EastEnders on a Saturday? Who knows what's out? Don't watch whatever. TV no more. Whatever. You know? yeah. but, but we're here talking about some real issues, you know, some real issues. Um, I've received one or two um, direct messages um, that I want to um, publicly say, and I'll allow any one of the, um, the panelists to respond to. Um, and also there's a question in the group but before we jumped into that um i just let's give like a little maybe five minutes just for everyone to respond so not necessarily for the panelists but for you guys who've taken your time it's important that we hear from you as well and like what are your thoughts so far based on what you've heard that's directed at anyone <laughs> just if i wasn't clear hello good evening uh, my name's susan i'm probably the oldest person here and it's been amazing listening to you all. First of all, I'd like to thank all of the panelists. You're all really powerful and positive in your own right, especially having gone on your own um, journeys. Um, like uh, Mark, I'm a parent of three children. And I think for me, I've lived out of the country for nearly 20 years and having come back, um, I've actually been pretty shocked at how bad things have actually become to be perfectly honest. And um, I've joined and we've started and worked really hard as an organization called Lewisham Education Group. So we have also started the Black Parent Forum. Um, the thing that's most shocking for me is how much young black men have really slid down this pole of life. 84% of young African Caribbean boys in the borough of Lewisham can't attain five basic GCSEs. So, that really has a serious impact on their whole life and social mobility. Um, there's a whole long thing that goes on here. But one of the things that has been really concerning me a lot is the state of the, you don't call them gangs, you'll call them friendship groups. <laughs> um, however you want to term it in school. Um, I, I brought my daughter back from the US here to do A-levels and then go on to university. Um, she was targeted by this extended friendship group and subsequently four years later, she still has serious mental health issues, which we're still processing and trying to deal with. Um, the bullying, the abuse and the general, absolutely hideous behavior. Um, now I'm asking, how do we protect the children in school from this being a continuous cycle? Because we came back from America. Lord knows racism and craziness was crazy, but it has nothing on what I've been seeing in the UK in terms of almost children turning in on themselves and each other. This society is very weirdly in, um, insidious in a way that I've never really seen. And I've lived Portugal, Spain, America, even I've spent time in Jamaica. My, my children went to school in Red Hills when they were small, but it's a whole different animal here. For children in school who are actually genuinely trying to get through school, but are being bullied, harassed. Young children who are trying to, to for football careers are being flung downstairs by other children who look like us because children are jealous of their potential future careers. How are we supposed to protect them and what are we going to do? Because recently um, the police has deployed 682 police directly into schools. So the, criminal, the criminalization is going to start here. To the panel, I don't mind who answers this, what would be your suggestion? That is a very strong point. Um, sorry, my name's Alex. I work for the Home Office, the criminality unit at the Home Office. Um, that's a very strong point. Um, hopefully, after the this, we can link. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, so would any one of the panelists like to um, respond to that? I'm not sure what happened to the person that was just speaking, but. I say something. Yeah, and Jade. Um, Jade. Yeah, sorry, I just have to move because I've got background noise. Sorry. Yeah, a minute. yeah I was just saying that um, I can. Um, what's that word? I can, you know, I understand exactly what. Um, Shiloh is saying um, in terms of the schools because I do remember when I was in school at like remembering I mean trying to get on but I remembered that with trying to get on you get the distractions from others and it was a it was either a thing of you kind of you're either you're involved with us or you're against us type of thing in it but I, what I do remember is that when certain certain other teachers they took certain teachers would take a liking to me and I would say that it was only through that that I could kind of what's that word di divert my attention to my education so I would always have like my head of like okay I know I've still got this to do and these type of teachers would always look out for me but I was just I would just say like through only through like organizations like real talk and what Davis is doing, Manhood Academy, I feel like these are the things that will help children to be more protected within those type of environments. Because I do definitely hear what, what's, what you're saying. I do agree that there's a lot of children and I think this is what's making it so, I don't know what, I think this is what exasperates the issue because I think there's a lot of children through fear, they're joining gangs through fear they're doing a lot of things that they don't think that that they wouldn't like to do do you get what i'm trying to say but because of because of the strength of there's strength in numbers if you get what i mean and then i think there's a lot of teachers out there that they that they just want to get through the day rather than yes. really pr protect children do you get what i mean protect children and also like really understand what's going on between them because obviously that the main the main objective is to go to school to learn but if there's other things happening there's no way you're going to learn that's like that's like there's a lot of children that they're scared to even go into school so if you're scared to go into school the last thing you're thinking of is what GCSEs that you're going to be having to do or anything like that but I just think the teachers need to be more supported there need to be more more teachers that understand black children as well like there's a lot of teachers that they live they live in Kent and they're coming into no. schools in London. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And they don't understand what's going in. It's the same no, like the saying. police, the police officers. No, do you know what I mean? The people that's living outside of wherever they're living, and they just see no, other little black kids that they don't care. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yep. So I think exactly. it, needs, it takes more people like us to come in and understand where these children are I, coming from. I get then, where you're coming sorry, from. Sorry, do you know what I mean? You no, know, because yeah. I just quickly jump in there really quickly. Can I just read? Yeah, I mean. Then are you saying because um, I can lobby hard? Is what I do. Um, so are you really saying that organisations like yours we need to bring to the panel? We need to because something's got to be done. I Definitely. mean, because we can't just simply say we're leaving it up to the teachers. The teachers don't give a rat's ass. Mm, right. That's that. exactly but, what. But me, sorry to jump. But sorry, meanwhile, God. our children are being damaged. But I mean, seriously damaged in a lot of cases by our own children yeah. and the whole learning process. They're too frightened to learn, even if they want to. So what, mm -hmm. are then, what are we then saying is the way forward? Because if we're cannibalizing each other, we haven't even touched on racism and the whole line. But if we're cannibalizing and hurting one another, what do we do? Are, are we going to be satisfied? Hold on, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. This, yeah, we bring this is in getting a bit too far. Sure. Hold on, wait a minute. Um, oh. That's why we're on this platform. That's why we're having this discussion. And it's very mild, you know. Can I say something? Sorry, guys. I've, I've just muted everyone because there's a lot of, like, talking over each other. Um, so, like, please, if we can just, um, if you do have a question, just raise your hand and then it will come to you. Otherwise, it will become a free for all. And <laughs> you know what happens after that, you know, um, yeah, complaints okay. and emails. So please um, keep yourself off mute. But if you do have a comment, I would encourage you to raise your hand. Um, Nana, I see you. Um, and then uh, um, Tim. OK. OK. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank All you right. for your patience as well. OK, thank you.
okay, no, nah, no, nah, I saw you somewhere, then you moved. But um, yeah, still it, yeah, I'm still it. No, thanks for that. Um, what I was gonna say is, is that you know we're talking about protecting our children and protecting our assets, but in order for us to protect our assets, we have to understand the journey of our young children. Now, one thing that we don't always address are the ACEs, which is adverse childhood experiences. So from the very beginning. Many of our young children that we work with or come into, you know, I say our care, you know, um, they would have experienced some form of maybe neglect. They would have witnessed something within the home, domestic violence. They would have witnessed a young person being stabbed and being killed. So that has future ramifications for them as they go through the education system and as they grow up. So, um, and a lot of those, in terms of my experience as a social worker, many of those children, when I look through their case file, um, they're pretty much known to children's services and they'll go on to be known to the offending services as well. And we don't, we tend to kind of look at them as perpetrators. We don't really look at and say, look, these experiences that they're having, how has it impacted upon them um, today in terms of their education? You know, Sister Mutt mentioned about labels. A lot of our young black children from a very early age are diagnosed. We hear it all the time, ADHD and ODD. Sometimes we're not really quick enough to get them assessed. So by the time they come to a stable by their teenagers, they may not want to engage the professional network to do that work because the motivation hasn't been there, but we haven't got in there early to work with them. So I think you have to start from the very, very beginning in terms of those traumas and look at the ramifications. It's just like, if you get a stone or you get any item, you put it in water, what does it do? It ripples. So the trajectory is already being set for our young black males, you know, and I can talk from a social worker saying that, a lot of these young people, you put them to the care, the amount of young black children in the care system, it doesn't really work. It's not really solving the problem. Yes, it may get rid of them in terms of the safety, but is it really address the underlying issues of what's actually happened? You know, so I think what, what we need to do is, is that, yes, we need to protect them, but we have to get it there very, very early in terms of addressing the ACEs. We don't tend to address the ACEs. And also in terms of our, our community, mental health, we don't really deal with it very well. So if our young black children have got a mental health issue, it's a taboo in our community. We leave things as well to drift. And sometimes professionals can miss those things later on down the line. You know, it can lead to our young black children being involved. Um, I'm not going to say gangs, but in criminal activity. So the path is already being set. Young black children are males being um, excluded from schools and going to Prus. We know that Prus are breeding grounds. Um, you know, for them being exploited and getting involved. That's where it actually starts. So I think to address um, how we can support them, address the ACEs from the very, very beginning first. Uh, you know, if we know about it, let's deal with it. If we need to do assessments, and I'm talking as a social worker, in general, the support services out there, let's tackle it. Otherwise, when we don't, you know, we <clears> have <throat> these young people. They're not, per young people don't become perpetrators overnight. They don't. Something has happened around them, both inside and outside of the home. It has to be addressed. So that's just my take on it. But I think address the ACEs in the beginning. Start in primary school. If you see something very, very, very early, address it. Also, I think, Sister Mook, I think it was Susan who mentioned about us going into um, schools. We need more of us to go into schools. Schools are very quick to exclude young Black children. Oh, they're mm -hmm. aggressive. But if you attach a Black professional to them, we're able to kind of empathize and understand where they're coming from. I've gone into those meetings where I've said, listen, you're excluding another young black child. I don't want another child to be another statistic. The same thing with the care system. I don't like the fact that black children in the care is skyrocketing. We need to do preventative work, but the ACEs need to be addressed. Mm. Can, I, can, I, can I just, if I can say that now, I mean, again, well said, I think there's some, some good comments in the, in the chat about what you just said, but before we move on, just to add this little bit, look, Somebody's put in the chat about um, some, maybe may a case of some parents that also have these ACEs, um, mm -hmm. adverse childhood experiences, that are not diagnosed, they don't know about. And so when we keep talking about going to the root cause, you know what I mean, dealing with generational stuff, this is where it's at, because at the moment we're just talking about young people, but obviously, as Nana said, it's come from somewhere. And so what we do, again, at Real Talk, you know, not going on too much about it, but we have like, um, a men's wellness um, forum. We do a women's wellness forum and a young people's forum as well, trying to, you know, look at these areas and, and identify where, you know what I mean, some of these, the ACEs have come from. Because 
then we can start to see a flow. We start to, uh, you know, attack the root, the root issue. At the moment, there's too much perambulating over the symptoms. We, you know, we keep on dealing with the symptoms. That's not the issue. Mm-hmm. We need to go to the core. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cut this thing over the head. Um, can I just, can I just can add I a, a point? Can I just yeah. add a point to what Nana's saying in terms of, as, as someone who's been a parent governor, the teachers do, one of the things parents need to understand about the ACEs as well is their own, like their own ACEs. It shows up in how they deal with schools. A lot of parents have fell through the net themselves and haven't got past that. They've um, had a little, uh, somebody said epigenetics, exactly. Um, you have circumstances where parents, you know, be, be fair-minded. I'm, I'm not an advert for, for schools the way that they are set up, but understand that you have to know your child and you can't go in as a parent defending your child and some parents, I've seen it so many times, they'll defend their child when their child is actually wrong because they're having to cover their own insecurity about their own experience. So they fly off, which is, you know, it's, it hinders what parents don't understand. Again, it's like childbirth. If I go in there and I start shouting the odds, that's going to affect the birth. If I go in and start shouting the odds at school, that's going to affect how they deal with the children. Some parents do not understand that the way that they behave has a direct impact on how that child is going to function in school. That parent thinks that they're coming in heavy handed. Ego is taking over now and we're not looking at, okay, this is your stuff. Step back from it. Like if I, any of my sons, when my eldest was in school and he went through different schools and trouble, different troubles in schools, like all parents go through this. And I would ask him this question. I say, OK, so where are you responsible? Before I even find out what I know I need to know, just let me know in advance. Where are you responsible? Because that so way true. I can have a strong conversation. Amen. What he did or didn't do. And a lot of parents are flying into the school and making matters worse. And a lot of that, you know, going back to the sister, um, Susan, your conversation there, just to, as a woman and as a woman who works, has worked with young people in that sense, personal development and the development of parents is key. We cannot go into these environments as a victim. We have to go in with a mindset. Okay, we have to develop. If, the, if, the, if your young lady needs CBT, uh, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, possibly get it yourself get it yourself have com- you know a community where it supports you both getting that family healing there's no point one child doing it there's no point a parent going for counseling my son was going through something I said you know what we were you brought up something that happened in our family and I said great you know what let's have some family counseling about it if you want it now he hasn't chosen that but the option is there and I'm not scared to look and if parents okay. are scared to look at their own aces and their own stuff, that child is a target. And that's all I'm okay. saying. Okay, but, thank, thank you, sister. Can I say can, something? One second. Can we, can, can we, we've got a few hands up. We've got a few hands up. Um, can we get, as I think, as um, David said, can we try and let's get some peck in order because it's going to go, it's just going to go all over the place. So can we have 100, 100 black men up, please, sir? 100 black men. What's your name, brother? Michael, Michael. Thank okay, you for coming forward. Um, yeah, I think it's been... Thank you for putting this on. Um, I think we need more platforms like this as well, especially when we're all coming together. Mm. There's a lot of organizations um, that are doing similar kind of stuff. Um, and I think we need to unite more and do these kind of things so we can come up with solutions. Um, we had a, had a conversation with our brother Davis, I think about two weeks ago, um, and we're saying similar stuff as well. Um, so it's good that we're finally um, joining these conversations and getting involved. Um, but the first thing that I wanted to say in terms of, and this is not even from a 100, this is just from what I've seen um, in terms of working with young people. I work with a lot of young people and the first thing that helps them is first of all, just giving them a voice. Mm-hmm. I think even when we have discussions like this, it shouldn't even be host by any of us. We should be in the background. We, and then we, we pushed one yeah. of the young people, or the, not one, we were a few of the young people to the front and let them lead the conversation and all we're doing is in the background, we're writing notes and we're finding out, okay, how can we support our young people? 
And, th and that's how we support our young people. We're talking about what we can do for them and everything like that, but we haven't got none of them here. Yeah. True. So it doesn't make no sense. So how, how are we going to find the real solutions? All we're going to do is go based on um, the ideas or opinions of what we think is going to work. It's like, okay, we've seen in the system, this is what's happening. So we think this is what we should do. We should go to them and just say, hey, what do you think the problem is? And then watch, watch when they come out and they don't even say anything about knife crime or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Because like we've been talking about, that's the fruits of it. They'll come and tell you what, they, they might have be able to tell you what the root of everything is. Do you know what, when, when I was growing up, this happened. Or right now, this is what I'm trying to deal with. I need to go to school. And the thing that's important is not whether I get good grades, it's whether I've got the right trainers on. I'm, or if I'm, if I'm like one of, the, one of the young boys was saying to us as well, he stopped coming to um, the mentoring sessions um, and he said, oh, I couldn't come because the location of it meant I had to get a bus through this place. Yeah. So if I get caught on the bus there, then it's, it's peak for him. And that's how, that's how he was talking. So he stopped coming. But it's things like that. But we're not, we're not, we're not discussing those things. Right. So I wrote, down a few, I wrote down a few notes. But the first one was, let's give these young people a platform and let them come and talk. So we can put the platform for them. Um, and, and then we bring them on to have these conversations. And like I said, we sit in the background. Mm -hmm. And I think another thing that we need to do, and I've, I've seen it in other communities, it gets to a stage where a generation needs to take a sacrifice. So what I mean by like take a sacrifice, I'm not talking like biblical terms, you go and like do, do all those kind of stuff. I mean, you might have to sacrifice your own kind of thing to build so that other, the next generation can come through and do big stuff. So we, it might mean a lot of us, instead of chasing wealth or chasing money and these kind of things and trying to get the best job and competing with each other, mm. it might mean, do you know what? I might need to leave my job and become a mentor, a full-time mentor and get half the pay, but just so I can affect this person or affect this group of people. And I know that these group of people will change our community for the, for the better. I think that's, 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 what, that's what, uh, like some of the things that I've said, um, that I've written down. Uh, like I said, yeah, we need to be in the background. Um, and another thing that I've, um, I wrote down is what we need to start doing, and sometimes as raw as it is, we need to start being open with our life experiences. Definitely. So some of the things that some of the things that like we've gone through, um, it could be good, bad, or whatever. We need to just be open with it. And sometimes we don't want to show our young person that because we're like, oh, what if they want to try and experience that themselves and they don't listen to us and all this kind of thing? No, it needs to be open, and you need to show a vulnerable side of them because you're asking them, oh, you need to open up, you need to be vulnerable, but we're not being vulnerable with them. You know, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. A lot, a lot of the young people that I've spoken to, before I ask them any questions, I go and tell them about my life. Or like, even if there's something that's going on right now that I'm struggling in, I won't hide it. I won't be like, yeah, yeah, no, nah, business is good. This is good. And I feel like emotionally I'm all there and everything like that. I'll be like, no, nah, today, sorry, I haven't reached out to you. It's been a bit hard a couple of days. Because then you'll see how they open up then and say, yeah, no, nah, I hear that, bro. Because do you know what? like what's been happening what's been happening with me especially now that we've been in COVID, we've been in COVID, this lockdown thing for over a year on off on on, on off and off uh, how many of us are reaching out to our young people and finding out how 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 are you because in 10 years time we're going to find out how they were right now mm -hmm. and and that's and, and and that's the truth of it like we're seeing little bits of it now but like things like we're talking about knife crime and stuff like that it hasn't calmed down since we've been in covid if, if you're bored what are you going to do you're gonna go out and cause mischief, and that's that's no matter how good you are, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna cause your mischief. <clears throat> your level of mischief is gonna be different. Um, so, and I think one of the other things that I was touched on today was about represent, representation, um, and then what people see and stuff like that. And I think that's one of one of, that's one of our main mottos at 100 Black Men of London. What they'll see is what they'll be. So if they're not see if they if they're seeing, I know there was a conversation about Premier League um, stars and stuff like that. If they're seeing Premier League stars, if they're seeing these drew eyes, they're seeing all these artists making paper, then obviously that's what they're gonna to wanna to be. So it's time for the people that are actually making the, making other people other ways, legitly as well, for them to come out and start showcasing themselves, not trying to hide and say, you know what, I, I, I'm liking my job right now, so I'm I'm maybe not trying to do this whole black thing. Nah, let me just stay back because my my director or my manager or my customers or my clients or whoever it is are white. So if I start pre preaching all this black stuff, then they're, they're, they're not, they're not going to like that. So let me be quiet. And I feel like sometimes, and not for everyone, but sometimes in our community, people are doing that. Um, and they're, they're, they're scared that if they talk too much about a certain, uh, this kind of topic, then it's going to be reflected on them. So they keep quiet. So then the young people won't see them. 
but it needs to be spoken it needs to be spoken about more and the last thing that i'll kind of touch on is we need to start we need to start building because it's good to have these conversations i love it but we need to start building power and influence a lot of a lot of the things lies in the fact that we can't do nothing at these stages except for as much as we are doing right now because we have no power or influence so if you look at other organizations other communities they the way they kind of the way they kind of work is if something's said about their race, the way they'll finish that person is, is ridiculous. If someone says anything about a black race, yeah. oh, you should you shouldn't have said that and all that kind of. Thing. But that's it. This person's still building and doing other things because with that power and influence we don't we don't have, and we need to start being attention, intentional about building that power and influence. And yeah, some of it will come from some of it will come from like having different levels of wealth and stuff like that. But a lot of it. A lot of it will come from us just uniting. Like if we, if we, if we, I know one of the visions and dreams of the 100 is that every young black child, um, female or male, has a mentor, someone to guide you through. Um, in, in the world. and that, and the way we look at it, it doesn't have to be the 100, a 100 mentor. That could be from any any organization. Be it that can be a mentor there, and you need that. And then when we come together, we can achieve that. But if we're trying to do it individually. There's no way that can be achieved. Yeah, yeah. There's not enough of us to spread around right. all the things. Um, right. And right. and we also need to, sorry, I said that was the last point, but this is the last point. We also need to bridge the gap between the, between the older generation and the younger generation. Definitely. The gap is Definitely. so big it's, and it's Definitely. so obvious as well. But some of the things that, some of the things that I hear the, like pre- when parents come and tell me, oh, your child's doing this, your child's doing that, blah, blah. Um, and then when I speak to a child, I'm like, the gap is they're not, they're not even seen. You know, he's not even acting out. This is just something that he's yeah, doing. He's yeah. trying to he's trying to tell you something, but you're seeing it as as you, he's being disrespectful to you yeah. because you, your whole your whole thinking and everything is 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 different. So that yeah. and and that's something that I, I always say to like my friends and the people in my in my generation. I'm like, it's time for you guys to step up as well because yeah. the reason why the gap is so huge is because like just because of the way things are. Like people like, like my in my generation will usually be the second um, second generation in this country, first generation to come here. They try and survive. They're trying to build something for their families, and they're just about surviving. Like every, the systems against yeah. them. Well, mm. well, so, well mm. if you can just really Sorry. wind it up okay. now, because this is a bad yeah, hands up. Yeah. And, and, and moving forward, if I can, I'm moving main, forward. Yeah, 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 no, Michael, no, definitely, man. Like what you said is on the money. But if I can just request as well, like for future, and I know we've got like about 20 minutes left, you know, but this is not the last conversation, but please, if we can keep our points like right to the point, um, that would be very much appreciated. Thank you guys. Um, um, brother, brother, brother Charlotte, who's next, please? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Let me just, before I bring, um, it's Tim, Tim's gonna come, Tim's got a double hand up. But just, uh, can I just, just to quickly recap on, um, Stephen said a lot of very key points there. I think one of the things that leapt out for me was that, you know, we ourselves have been tapping too much into the negative narrative. Because look, the knife crime thing, the gun crime, it's not a new thing. You see what I'm saying? It's been going through generation to generation, but we have embraced it and we've started to move with what the so the society agenda is. Yeah, that's that, that's one of them. I just wanted to say that. And then being transparent and real and even showing our youngers our own experiences, I think that's key because then you start to gain their respect, you gain their trust, they can relate to you. You know what I mean? So on. There's loads of points I wanted to flag up there, but in the interest of time, let's bring um let's Tim, Tim and Tatiana, please. Thank you. Yeah, hi Shola. Um, I just wanted to say something. I mean, that I, I can't remember the guy's name, he's from Newham. I mean, I was born and raised in Newham. So certain things he was saying it sort of related to me. And I think um, one of the other ladies was saying something about um different um what's it called different disorders i'm 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 40 and i was um i found out in my later education i.e college that i was dyslexic i recently found out i had adhd so these are the sort of things other things that like kids they find out in later stages and even through adulthood but what really helped me yeah they get misunderstood but what really helped me was martial arts um like doing my jiu-jitsu, like Brazilian jiu-jitsu, my Thai boxing, it helped me mentally, it helped me try to turn up my life, and I'm still doing that right now. That's why I tried to, you know, jump on, and I'm speaking to Shola, and he's helping me. And I'm and I'm one of these people that, I, I don't want to sit back and just 
I don't want to hear these sort of things where another kid's been stabbed or getting involved in some sort of thing. I've heard too many stories. I've had parents come to me, friends, cousins, whatever, say these sort of things. And I, I basically, I just want to do my little piece to stop these sort of things happening because I'm sick of it. That's, that's, that's my little point anyway. Okay, brother. Okay, thanks for that, Tim. Moving mm -hmm. on, I think you made some, again, some key points there. We're just going through the hands up, the hands up bit there. Uh, the comments again on Tim, what Tim has had to say. Um, on the hands up, I think we got it's JP next after that. Can we have um, Kimoy, please? Mr. JP, come into it. Um, yeah, so we all say that we want practical steps. So I am what you guys are talking about right now. I went to private school. I've been part of the foster care system. Well, I was a high achiever in school. So high that I done, they put me forward to do a GCSE a year early. One year from doing GCSEs, I'm already involved in serious crime. And what I will tell every single person on this platform is that you have more power than you think you have. So what the problem is we think we're powerless. We think we don't have choices. And this is what I can only, I can, exp I can tell you this from understanding. A lot of the young people think their choices are limited. And our generation are not helping them because we're actually empowering them limitations and taking on these wrong identities. You're raising up a child and you yourself are fearful of that child leaving the house. That already ministers to your child intrinsically. So they already almost open themselves to certain things. I keep on talking about there's a lot of delinquent parents, parents that are not present but are there. I remember when I was 13 or 14, the first time I got robbed, I went home and I sat in the toilet and I cried because I had nobody to talk to, even though I had a full house. And these are the problems that these young people are facing. Next, what happens? You are the biggest voice in their life until they realize that you yourself are a fraud. I remember the day when I realized my dad was not a superhero and my brother was not my superhero. At that point, someone else is going to take that position, whether it's the government, whether it's the teacher. It's a shame that a lot of our teachers, we, we're, we're expecting things from our teacher. Your teacher is just a facilitator of education. They are not your child's parent. So your expectation of your teacher should not be so high. They get a nine to five, that's their job. So when we start realizing these things, and these are issues that happened in my own life, responsibility of a parent was given to somebody else. Hence how we ended up in foster care. Parents not sitting down with their child and what I'm not talking about talking at them, but talk with your child. You can't tell your child, don't get involved in knife crime. That's not going to make no difference. Tell your child, actually, do you know what you can be? And actually ask them, what do you think you can be? Do you know the amount of people I ask on a daily, daily, uh, daily time, ask them, what is your purpose? And in their 40s, they don't know what their purpose is. And I always think, has anyone actually asked a young kid, do you have a purpose? Has anyone asked a young kid and actually empowered them? Nobody told me I could do anything. Nobody ever told me this. Nobody presented anything realistic to me as a child like we all do. Majority of us are still under the old way of thinking, education, education, education. So what our children do, especially like when we have a plan until GCSE, which is past your GCSE, at that point, it's not a coincidence, a lot of them go wild. A lot of the girls start sleeping around more. A lot of the guys start having more influence with friends because what happens, parents lose the responsibility of their kid by default. And this is the things that we have to do. I love what Nana said because it always starts from the home. We're using these statistics, but there are other statistics of kids who went to the same school who succeeded. Kids from the same area of Newham, the same area that's get all to the fullest and they succeeded so there's something else going on and these are the things I love to investigate I love to investigate what was going on in that house what structures was put in place in that house mm -hmm. we've got a lot of broken relationships 
So we've got decisions men and women have already made prior to your child being born that now your child is a beneficiary of. Hmm. They're going to see the way you talk about their dad. And now they're going to have an image of themselves. They're going to see the way you talk about your mom. And they're going to have an image of themselves. They're going to see the way you interact with your aunties and your cousins. Uh, Yes, I don't like that auntie. But when she comes around, we play games and we act like everything is cool. Your children see all of these. And these are the things that's conditioning them in life. Then another one which touches me, and Shola knows how much this touches me. We have turned black people ugly. What I mean by that, by the way we talk about one another. We're doing this by accident, but we've turned ourselves ugly. So it's not a coincidence. When I was young, just imagine, I walk on the road. If I see a white person, I have no interest in him. If I see a Chinese person, I have no interest in him. The second I see a guy that looks kind of like me, I want to screw him. I know this guy from nobody. But now I want to screw him because I have an internal hate for myself, which has come from somewhere. Now, if you have not changed that in your household yet, you're going to have a problem in the future. That's why I can leave my house with a knife and a gun and decide it's not a coincidence. Half of my crimes were not against, violence crimes were not against anyone else except for people of my own community. Because I had an internal hate, which stems from so many things, colorism, dark skin, light skin, look at your nose, you don't have nice hair, look at this, look at that. All of that is creating a toxic identity. So now they're going to lash out when they see somebody with that same identity. And now what we are trying to do now, we are trying to empower them from a young age, telling them, you know, you are great. You are beautiful from a young age. Do you know you are extremely talented? You just don't have to be a footballer, you know? There's other avenues out there. You don't just have to be a musician because there's other avenues out there. A lot of us don't even put our kids into instruments. We don't do nothing with them. We don't even watch them at at sports. We've never actively paid attention to their life. And then when it goes wrong, we're asking for the solutions. But actually, we have so much power right now, (laughs) literally today. If you've got a cousin, you've got anyone, do you just asking them, do you have a purpose? Do you know just that the, the clogs will go in their mind? I never ever knew the word purpose until I was in my 20s. I never knew such a word existed because no one ever asked me, do you have a purpose? And the more that we start engaging them in their purpose from a young age, you will see the difference that is made in their life. A lot of the black people will look up to, they started when they were young. These uh, Serena Williams, footballers, all these people started their purpose very young. A lot of the issues that we talk about that we're facing is because of a lack of purpose, lack of, remember, purpose breeds discipline. There's just a lack of discipline. There's a lack of accountability. There's a lack of purposeful, intentional, (laughs) intentional activity in their lives. Sorry, that's, that's five minutes. That's all right. Yeah. Good stuff, JP. On point is you. Can I, can, I, can I just quickly put in there before the next person up is going to be Kamoy. Still coming to Elaine. I've seen your hand up. Don't worry. But um, Kamoy has been been there and, and, and Ishmael slightly before you and Juan as well. Um, purpose. You know, JP knows we've been doing this in our, um, we've got some wellness, men's wellness, women's wellness forums going on. And it is exactly targeting that. Because even, even adults, as you said then, some of us adults don't even, uh, at this age, this point in time, we don't know what our purpose is. So then how can we expect our young ones, you know what I mean, to know where they go? There's no, there's no flow. There's no role modeling, nurturing experience that's planted, you know, that seed into their heads, right? I'm shutting up. Kimoy, come through, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, big up brother JP and also um, brother Michael as well. Thanks for those inspirational words. Um, Ishmael introduced me before, so I'm a youth worker in Manchester and also I'm head of year nine in, in a school in Manchester as well. 
Um, what I wanted to say, um, Michael, brother Michael, you might have had your first booking. Um, so basically, um, I meet with um, 60 plus young people on Zoom on a weekly basis and we talk. It's every Tuesday yeah. from 7.45. We talk, they talk, they they lead the meeting. Um, they they speak about obviously young people's issues and what's going on. So I know someone, um, brother Michael, I think it was you mentioned that it'd be good to have a forum where you can just come and listen to young people. And what I'm saying is I'm offering it out yeah. to, to people in this meeting that this happens and it does happen young people do lead a lot of these meetings yeah. and this is what i mean it's about understanding obviously you know what are, what are the areas are doing as well learning from good practice and in manchester there are some young people that i work with that lead their meetings yeah. in the week so i am offering it as a, an opportunity there for people to get in touch come and listen to the young people in our meeting which is on a tuesday and listen to what they've got to say i'd love to have some of you come and speak as well, I've heard some passionate speakers tonight, and I think it's incredible. It's inspiring. So I really want to get a few few of you into our into our meetings in the week. I wanted to mention one quick point as well. So obviously, I mentioned I work in a school as a head of year. I'm only one black person in that school. I'm only one black person that's a middle leader in that school. You know, um, and when I look at it, I think. So our sister mentioned it before we do need to start working in these schools one black young person said to me they didn't know a black person could be a teacher this is what that black young person said in that school and that when he said that to me you know I was kind of like wow and, and I always say and I get this phrase from a few other teachers that say you cannot be what you don't see and if a lot of our young people don't see people like us in schools and um, working in those positions as well you know they don't believe they can do that you know, and, and, and when you look at the data, there's only 1% of a, of a head teacher that's black within the UK, you know, so we really need to start getting into those places, building those young people aspirations where they believe that they can also be in that position as well. Um, so yeah. it was only short and sweet for me. I didn't want to kind of talk long, um, let's, but it was just to say, obviously, there are some solutions there yeah. to what I'm saying. And I really would like to link up with a few people yeah. to look at, obviously, moving forward, what we can do together. All right, thanks for that, brother. I mean, as you rightly said, it is all about collaboration. And just to assure everybody and, and yourself as well, Kamoy, that there are um, young people initiatives going on, just to tap into what Stephen said as well. Um, it is important for young people to lead out their, you know what I mean, their forum. So it's young people peer mentoring other young people. And that's one of the things that, one of our, one of the plants that we've really got sort of you know, kick, kickstarting at Real Talk. Um, so we'd love to liaise with you, um, uh, Kimo, anyway. Definitely, we'll, you know, we'll pick up your details as, as the night goes on. Um, I think we've got Juan next in line, and then Ishmael, and then, um, I know it's normally ladies first, but I know uh, Elaine has quite a bit to, 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 to possibly round us off with. So can we go Juan, please, and then Ishmael, and then Elaine, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, brother. Um, I'm just going to literally add something. It's very quick. Add something to what um jp was saying because i totally relate to what he's saying about sitting down and actually talking to young people and re and and listening to what they want and, and one of the things that um that has allowed me to kind of really be able to bring value to the to to the young people that i work with is is actually taking the time to sometimes we all have knowledge and i mean there's there's so many practitioners here that have obviously education and that have a high level of skill in order to be able to help and support young people. And sometimes the way we come, the, same, the way we approach how we wanna help them is we believe that we have a solution or we can help them find a solution where recently, I think I've taken to um, a term I heard recently called reverse mentoring. So reverse mentoring is where practically you allow the young person to mentor you. So you approach the young person like you don't know nothing and you listen to them and you look, practically I'll give an example. And even it was today, I was in Brixton today working down at the Steel Warrior Gym. And, and I was there, there was a couple of men there, you know, they're active on road. And one of them was talking about like burners and, and, and you know, a whole predicament that happened in Streatham. And then, you know, I, I just literally took intrigue to what they were talking about. And obviously they trust me because they know I'm local from the area. So they're just opening up and talking openly about what goes on. And after the conversation, I kind of just threw, thought to chuck in a question. I said, yo, my bro, listen, you know, I, I hear all the madness that's going on and everything. But, you know, from everything I'm hearing you talk, I'm just thinking, bro, like, where, where do you achieve success in this? 
and the four men that were all there, they all kind of paused, and then I just said, beyond, beyond, you know, like what's got. Listen, I get what you lot are doing on road. You know, like ultimately, you know, you're trying to earn bread. You know, okay, you're hustling. You know, it, it is what it is. You know, we live in the environment, and I, and I and I can relate to it because growing up, like, I I migrated from from Colombia, and 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 my dad couldn't speak English. He was a cleaner, and he couldn't he couldn't even make ends meet. Like we didn't even used to get trainers to like, you know, two years till the like souls were practically ripped up. And I used to get bullied. And obviously the language barrier was also something that really knocked my self-confidence. So I just channeled all my frustrations through through violence. And, and that kind of was what allowed me to get, gain significance in my social circle. You know, I grew up in Tottenham and I remember that I used to be the guy that used to be sent out to punch someone or to do something stupid. And, and yeah, I, I, I'm a grown up now, but I'm mature enough to recognize I was a send out because I was a vulnerable young person. And I remember just being poor, but I wanted to really, I, I didn't want to accept the fact that I was, that, you know, that my situation, I didn't want to accept the fact that I was struggling and I was looking for a way out. And then I remember just looking around and all my brethren when I was in year seven, year eight, you know, it's the first time I ever went to school. And I, I found a couple of men that were making pee and they were selling zoot in the school and they were making that 10, 20 pounds. And I was thinking, right, if I do that for four weeks, I could have 80 pounds to buy myself a pair of trainers. And that's the first time at the age of 13, I went and ticked a little something and I got on road and I started kind of like doing my thing. But I remember yeah. I didn't do it from an intention of thinking, yeah, you know, like I, I want to be a bad man or blah, blah, blah. I was just thinking like, I, I, I don't, I don't want to accept my quality of life. And now a lot of these men that I speak to, especially the guys today, when they actually deeped what I asked them, I said, where is success in this for you? They were like, bruv, bruv, you know what? I never even really thought about it. And I said, okay, furthermore, what would success mean? And that's when they started talking about what their plan is. They, they're on road doing what they're doing. And they all, if you talk to most young people, they all have a further down the line plan. Oh yeah, when I make it, I'm going to open a studio. Oh yeah, when I make it. And you hear people over and over saying, when I make it. And I'm just saying, well, bruv, why don't you make it now? And, okay, and anyway, look, I don't, okay, I don't brother. want to keep talking, sorry. No, that's fine. No, yeah, thank you. I didn't know JP's thing. It's yeah. a case of just, yeah, listening to them. Okay. All right, bro. Thanks for, thanks for sharing. Again, all, all key points, all points. Like I said, we've, you know, we've got, there's so much packed in, so much going on. Mm. Um, we're just appreciating everyone's really, you know what I mean, tuned into, you know, to, to the timing factor. So can we have, um, who did I say next? Ishmael. Ishmael. So it'll be Ishmael and then Elaine, um, Angela, and then Jay. And I think then we're going to have to really kind of lock it, I think. Um, yeah, Ishmael, come in, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, basically, I've seen all the lovely people in this chat. So we all know what the problem is, okay? So I'm a big believer, and I, I'm just about talking about solutions. We all know the problems. And I believe the solution is, pardon me for being arrogant enough to say the solution, the solution is we need to have a black UK youth workers and mentoring association as independently run by us and for us. And this is the umbrella organization of all of our organizations that we work in around the country, where we could all share good practice, um, network with each other and benefit our young people at the same time. And as an umbrella body, we can liaise with schools around the country. We know how this, all of us deep down know how this country works. They respect umbrella organizations and associations and so forth. So if we come together as one force, one body, and all as subsidiaries, we can approach schools and state the status quo. Many teachers in schools are hungry for various black organizations to come in, but due to circumstances and whatever, it hasn't come through. So our beloved sister, Susan, who asked the question earlier on, I'm gonna try and answer it quickly. Our sister, what, when these things happen to our children, we need to call out for help ASAP. Um, our young boys are uh, ravaged with porn, okay? Porn, whether we like it or not, it's a reality. It's on their phone, quick time. Forgive me, when I was young, if we had to get a magazine, one day you have it, one day you have it, okay? So uh, forgive us, but today, is on this, it's easily accessible from a click of a, of a button. So because a lot of our youths are watching porn morning, noon and night, and our music perpetuating it morning, noon and night, 
A lot of our young people, whether we like to admit it or not, have no respect for women and girls. So we need to encourage our uncles, encourage our brothers, encourage our nephews, encourage other men in the family to walk our daughters to school and back from school. Because sadly, many of our young people are tainted by the porn, whether we like it or not. Okay, last Okay, brother. Week. Okay, uh, we leave it there, brother. Thank you. Yeah, for please, the please. Time. Thank you. No, thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Um, again, key points, very strong points. I love that. You know, this whole strength, unity numbers I put in the chat there. Look, guys, we have to get more, we have to be more sophisticated in the way we do things. You know what I mean? Less emotional, more sophisticated, more practical. Um, yes, Elaine, sorry for the wait. Come in, please. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be a little bit of an uh, angel's advocate. I'm not going to say devil's advocate. We're going to give you two advocate. Elaine, sorry. sorry First of all, We're going to give you two to minutes. Answer. Two minutes, Elaine, sorry. Literally, two minutes. To answer Susan's question, because I don't think it has been answered apart from what Ishmael just said. Susan, what we do with young people is go through, we look at protective factors and risk factors for young people. We do this as a preventative measure. Um, um, but there's, you can find it on Google, just Google preventative um, um, factors and, and risk factors. But we have different activities that allow a young person to reflect on what they are in their life so that you also as a parent or as a youth worker, youth practitioner can also get to know them. So you can start to have conversations to help them to navigate the risks and also to bring in the protective factors. Um, also, I would wanna say, and this is where I'll come um, devil's advocate. I'm a youth practitioner, I'm an expert mentor. If I ever lead my mentoring conversation with a young person with what I've been through, I need therapy because it's all about the young person. How we've lived our lives, we don't know how the young people are gonna interpret that or what they're gonna, like when we think about insurance and um, public liability, it really comes into it when we're sharing our lived experience. We have no idea the ripple effect of that. So it's really good for everybody who wants to work with young people. If you don't think you need therapy, go get it anyway, right? And then when we're speaking with the young people, we come with um, the skills that is out there just by doing the courses. Please don't think that, and I'm not, I'm not saying that anybody that's spoken before needs therapy. I'm saying that if you are mentoring a young person and you're leading with your experience, all right? Um, the, the, the consortium that Ishmael's speaking about, I wanna be a part of it, please sign me up. I don't know who's gonna be leading on it. But one thing I will say, and I'll end on this, Power is the ability to do something. We all have the power. And when we look at our situation, we tend to look at what's happening on a wider scale. Bring your focus down to you and your network because that's where our power and influence is. You can't come and influence my family and my son and his friends and, and our network unless you're involved in that. So if we all work on our little nucleus, our nuclei, then the ripple effect will have a wide effect. But if we look at the bigger picture, there's no way we can mash that down here in the UK. So I think there's just the, the mindset, I'm not gonna lie, it gave, I was having anxiety attacks sitting here. I've come out of the black power movement. I was a member of the um, All African People's Revolutionary Party. I was set up um, a JAMU, which is over in Tottenham. I've been through all of this. The only way we can actually make change is by cutting out fear, cutting out hate, healing ourselves and upskilling ourselves and coming together as whole people. That's all I'll say. Thank you very much for that, Elaine. Well said. Again, very straight to the point. And it is, it answers this thing about sophistication, doing our things in a, in a very formulated way, you know, that makes sense that so people are not, you know what I mean? Sort of looking at us as like a, a kind of rabble that we don't know what we're doing. So, you know, thanks, thanks, thanks for putting that in. Um, okay, we're going to round up two more points. I'm going to literally, literally two minutes each, please. And, we're trying to abide by it, please. Um, uh, Angela and Jay. Angela up next, please, and then Jay. Hi, I'm going to keep it um, really short. I'm Angela from Manchester. Greetings to everybody. Um, the collaboration of minds is amazing right about now. And I like the fact that people have touched upon the fact that we need to be basically passing all of this on to our young people. My son's in the background, he's listening. Passive listening is better than not even listening. There's young people mm. amongst us all the time. I'm a teacher, I work in a pre from Manchester. I'm saying that I had to knock on doors 
all the way in London with a man mm. called Academy David for support. So when Ishmael is talking about we need something together, mm. that we can knock on all of these different schools and say we're coming from a collective organisation, we do need it. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Well done. Thank you for observing the time. Props to you. Okay, last but not least, Jay, please. And let's do Manners after Jay, because Manners yeah. had his hand up from the okay, longest no while as well. Yeah, right, cool. Sorry about that, Manners. I didn't even see that. Sorry, bro. Okay. Yes, sorry. Right. Greetings, everybody. Um, thank you, for um, Ishmael, for, for, first of all, reminding me about this space. Um, yeah, I, I work around school exclusion, so I've been doing this now for way too long. And, and I'm probably is the oldest person in this room, granny, great granny, but it's not gonna stop me from doing what I do. Um, and and my, my key points for this is about solutions, as Ishmael said. And today I was talking to another lady who talked about, you know, us being self-sufficient. It's just a simple thing to require everybody to, to input a pound. But in order for us to do that, we have to learn to trust each other. It's a pound, it's not gonna kill anybody, but it's gonna go a long way, especially when things like Davis is trying to um, do rites of passage, when we're trying to put together events, we must be self-sufficient. We mustn't keep relying on, on, on the government and anyone else to do anything for us because we see, I've been doing this for like 40 years, they're not gonna do it. All that happens is that they juggle around with semantics, so your children going from education is subnormal to, to be in um, SEND. So we need to be the change that we want to see. And somebody else also mentioned it. It's about sacrifice. Believe me when I tell you that I am really tired. I've got less years in, ahead of me than I have behind me. But it will never stop me as long as there's breath in me. I will keep going because I see the impact of things like school exclusions. I see the devastation that it causes. I see the lives that get lost. And the key thing for me is all around identity. We must learn to build our identity. As far as I'm concerned, I have, a, I have an excellent grandfather, God rest his soul, that taught me from day one that I am African. I am African. I am never gonna give up being African to be a color. We need to be able to say to ourselves, look, this is who we are. This is who we identify as. Whether you then want to say I'm African, but I'm black, that's fine. But please, people, we need to be able to say to our young people, you have an identity. They're in crisis at the moment because they don't know who they are. They're African, they're Caribbean, but they live here and they abide by the rules here and the regulations. And they're told that they're black, but black is compared to white and white is superior. We need people to get ourselves together because our children are dying. And I know that there's, there's, a, there's an issue with the elders not getting engaged. I try my utmost to, to engage with them, believe me. I love hearing the voices of young people and their experience because that's the thing that is gonna make any change. Anything that's ever happened in this country, anything that's ever happened has always been about the young people pushing this change. They are, the, this is the reason why we do this. It's them that we need to hear. That, so anybody that's setting up anything where young people are gonna be in, and I will hold my own and I will hold my hands up and I will tell you all the mistakes I made. I'm going to tell you about the times that I beat my children because that was what I thought until I realized that actually, where did that come from? That came from the slave masters beating us. We need to stop doing the things that are damaging and we need to own this stuff. I'll own my stuff. I will tell you my life story if that's what it's going to take to get me there. I'm not going to tell you as, as the lady from the mentor that just spoke from the mentoring thing said, we can't traumatize our children with our life stories. We cannot leave them there. But people, if you're too perts, you go to a dentist. If you've got mental issues, please. If you've got trauma, if you've got anything, seek some help. Mm, thank you, Auntie. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank <sighs> you. Thank you. I all think right. that's all our panelists done now, isn't yeah. it? Um, no, we've got uh, manners now. Manners okay, was, manners, manners sorry, was manners, the last manners, one. Manners, yeah. Manners, yeah. If you're still here, you still here? Emmanuel. Okay, I think he has uh, gone. Okay. Oh, can um, you hear me? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, you move fast. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I was just going to say that like, what I've heard today is, is absolutely amazing. It's, it's powerful, powerful <laughs> stuff. Uh, and everything is positive. I was going to really, really quickly, yeah. 
a few one word what I know what I've learned over years with young people the word shame yeah young people nowadays cannot take shame and that is obviously there's a lot of factors we've got social media and stuff young people like I said, young people nowadays they cannot take shame so going back to the point of um what sort of lady was saying about her child was getting bullied and so on um in school and stuff like that so what I've kind of worked out working in schools is like a lot of the time it's a lot it's a lot easier to bully someone <laughs> if you're if you're getting persecuted as we say in one way or another and you try to hide it inside and where it's a lot easier to take out on somebody else you know what I'm saying that's the that's the simplest and easiest thing that kind of inverted commas makes you be what's the word I'm kind of looking for be a bit more in do you see what I'm saying so if you can kind of bad up other people it will get you a, a kind of bit of respect in it which is unfortunate but like someone was saying this is where you need to come and they're supposed to go and see certain people in the school what I will say about teachers not all teachers care it's just a job to them and it's not their job like someone said to actually do that yeah so that's why I said being in schools and getting them early and finding out what they like or what someone was saying about um about the boys on the road and stuff like that it's one thing what they've got to love what one thing what they can hold on to we can say no you know what if I had a choice I would I would want to do that you know and we know what we can just try and show them you know what you might not actually be able to be an astronaut, but you might be able to work for NASA. Do you see what I'm saying? You've got to give them, there's no, there's nothing that's going to hold them back. Do you see what I'm saying? But I was just going to say, that word shame about young people and trust and respect is so important as well. Seeing people that they can actually go to talk to and say, nah, you know what? This blah, 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 blah. And then that's how we can help them as well. And as well, someone said about the parents as well, which I said at the beginning about, that's another big factor as well. Because a lot of parents... Like I said, I've had so much debates with parents where I've had, they've come to the school and I've had to tell them, I don't want your son to be like how I was. I've got scars in my head and my face and I've got, I'm a walking wounded, but I've come out the other side. I don't want them to go through what I've been through. So between two of us, and then what I try to do is get the parents on the side and say, look, you help me. You need to keep an eye on your child and then I can work in school. Because if I'm telling you your son is inverted commas bad, you're supposed to listen to me and say, this is how we can work or this is how we can work with it. So, but I ain't going to go into it. I've got so much, I've written so much stuff down, but I'm not going to go into it, but I love it and I can't wait for the next one and let's just do this. But I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> so I just thought, thought I'd just say that, that word shame is a very big, big word as well in young people as well. But that's a whole different ball game we'll be getting into. But yeah, I just thought I'd say that as well. Thanks for that, brother. Thanks for so that, brother. True. Yeah. So yeah. true. So true. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot, guys. There, ladies and gents, there's a lot. There's a lot to say, a lot going on. And I think it's really been a productive evening. You know, a lot of good comments, a lot of strong comments. Um, it can only lead to the next step, it can only lead to a part two. It's got to lead to a sequence. Um, but then the practical. So, you know, we, we, we maintain the dialogue, keep the talk up. But it's, you know, this talk now from, from this point in has got to lead to a practical step. So, in the interest solution, of time, solution, yeah, exactly. Solution. In the interest of time, pick it up on some of the um, points. I think Stephen said it. Um, who else? There was somebody else that mentioned about the young people leading out. Kamoy, I think he mentioned it. Um, um, brother DJ, do you want to talk about this? The, the call to action. Because I think we've got to. I think we've got to leave tonight, not just having talked. I think you know, myself, uh, DJ, and myself have talked about things. It was kind of, it's, it, in a way, I think we've kind of preempted what was going to go down tonight. Um, and when you hear about the call to action that, we, that we're suggesting, I think you'll see that it's not just something that we've just thought up, just kind of reactively. So, um, DJ, do you, want to, do you want to take the floor and just... Yeah, do you know what? Yeah, in, in and, um, and uh, um, yeah, this is a bit off script and I did send you a, um, a message here, but yeah, I feel so... that we should, um, you know, have a, have a further conversation because you see, mm. Like, even for my, I speak for myself at manhood, yeah. Like, mm. those that know me know that I'm very active, very mm. active, you know what mm. I'm saying? Like, every single day. And I've not done nothing. Like, I've not, like, this kind of space, mm. I've kind of, I wanted to avoid it because I know the avalanche that comes mm. with it. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, mm. it's not just an event, it's yeah. what happens afterwards and the sequence of yeah. events that will Follow take up. place. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so for us, I'm, I know we had a conversation prior as well. Mm -hmm. um, but listening to what I'm saying, like, I need to meditate. Like, because the ripple is so, like, you, I can see the ripple and I'm saying, do you know what? That change is right here at the doorstep. 
you know? Mm. And mm. I can only speak for myself. Mm. I know all of us believe in change and um, mm. we're for it, but I can literally see it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, mm. And before I jump in that wave, personally, mm. you know, mm. Let's not make no call to action right now. Personally, mm. do you know, I would encourage everyone to come to the second part. Do you mm. know what I mean? Come to the second part where we can build properly. Um, mm. It's about solution focus. It's about action, right? Also, I'm not sure who's on the call, so I don't want to say too much as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. It's just about having a... a cl- I'm just being real, in it? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, it's about having a close conversation and let's make sure it's watertight just so when we present it, you know, it's presented yes. with the right powerful intention. That's just, that's just my answers are speaking to me right now. Um, mm. I had a whole, you know, blurb about the call to action mm. and it's going to happen, but mm. there's, there's some other things that we need to consider. Mm. And mm. also I'm no. conscious of... And yeah. also I'm conscious of time as well. Um, so for myself, and I want to honor okay. that time. Like we've already fifteen minutes, so yeah, we're going we're going slightly over. Okay, yeah. no, I hear, I hear that. Um, the, 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 I think what we're going to do anyway, because it is a collaboration. I did say to you that we were we were looking at doing something next week anyway. So even if we don't tag it as as that call to action, we will be um, doing an initiative, as I mentioned anyway. Um, yeah, mentioned it. Yeah, third, yeah, we're gonna we, we're, we're gonna press ahead with that. So it'll be the young people. As I said, we've got um, a men's arm. The men's wellness, we have the women's wellness, and we've got the youth wellness, which are, which is going to launch next week. You know, we have a studio up in Canary Wharf, um, and we use that to sort of interact and do uh, media workshops and, and, and music workshops for the young people to come in, express. Sometimes they don't necessarily want to come down and have a discussion like this, but we're going to have a kind of dual thing where they're going to be able to express in their creative way, but also have that chance to discuss. So that's going to be on the back of this. But as um, DJ rightly said, you know, the call to action, be, I think it's, it's, it's a massive thing. I don't believe we should be too reactive and jump into it. It's going to take a lot of planning. As you rightly said, look, we've got over 60. How many people on the line? 60, 64 people on the line. It's going to, I think, about 66, 67 total tonight, which I think is great. Um, and the ripple effect has already started. The wave has already started. So I think what we've done tonight, I think we've collaborated. We've, we've taken people's details. Hopefully there's going to be some, some real positive networking going on and then we move so i'm just putting that you know to reach out to you all the next week any young people that you do have that you don't want to come through obviously like drop us a line um on the real talk email um jade you might just put in the real talk details contact details in the chat please or Jola. Jola. Yeah? can i say um i've asked about the recording what's going on is there going to be any access to the recording of this meeting say again sorry is there going to be any access to the recording because I see that it's recording because there's not there's some people that I've spoken to and they want to wanted to jump on they didn't get to uh is right. there any way that we can somebody else yeah we will know? yeah I'll give you the details after I think yeah, DJ, so, DJ, yeah, I DJ's think people got that, yeah. wanted to know that as well. yeah we got yeah we've got that cover we've got that cover so we definitely we, we can filter out the information out, no problem Thank thanks you. for that um to tell you, yeah okay yeah. back to you um uh, DJ yeah, so just in the um, in the spirit of time and everything else, like family, we really um, want to thank everyone for their attendance today. Um, we appreciate your 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 energy. Um, you know, sorry for those that didn't get a chance to um, talk. It, I'm already in trouble because I'm over 20 minutes late, and I'm, <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you know, but like the energy was what what yeah um, yeah. Thank you. Like, please complete the link um, that we put in the group. Um, just so we can keep in touch with you. Um, if you want to get in touch with us about anything that we've said, please reach out. Like, There's a lot of contacts in there. We're going to share this Zoom recording for anyone that wants to refer to it and make notes. Um, and we'll definitely be here again um, in a few weeks just to, just to take it up a notch. Because family, let me say one thing, right? This is not a sprint, is it? Like none of us are you saying this is a marathon. Yeah, you need endurance. You need like mental well. It's a, it's a lot that goes into it. And I'm, I'm talking about someone that's been... I've, I've not had no break in my interrupt in my work for over like 20 years, you know, apart from the odd holiday here and there. Um, and it takes a lot of work. Nani will tell you, you need to be at a certain place spiritually and physically and mentally to be able to be that change that you want to see. But like JP said, um, we are the power. Like, we don't need to ask no questions. <laughs> Literally, we don't. We don't need to ask no one that like, we can do it. Um, but it will take a little bit of planning, obviously. Um, and just like with JP said as well, I, I love plans. I don't like just doing things ad hoc. So I would just like kindly on behalf of myself and everyone from Manhood Academy and everything else that I'm doing, 
I would like to say thank you for your time. Thank you for gracing us with your, with your presence. Um, feel free to unmute yourself and to say um, to buy to whoever you want. You know what I mean? Let's have you know a bit of organic um, childish. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's okay to be childish at times and a bit playful. But thank you all for, for attending and we'll definitely be in touch soon. Sola, feel free to um, end how you wish, my dear. Yeah, I'm just going to say my piece as well, DJ. Again, just to reiterate what you said, thank you. Bless you all for, you know, for really taking the time out. You could have been doing anything. Bless. You know what I mean? You've dedicated, you've spent time, you've brought some real points in. We've been real, we've been open. You know, invite your personal networks again. Listen, we're going to grow this thing large. It's you know about I mean? networking. Yeah? yeah, and let's just, you know, stay true, stay strong, right. stay stable. Mm. Bless you all. Thank you. God bless. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. Bless. Bless. Nice Beautiful. Jay. Bless.